Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Football Corner. Welcome back to another live stream, another show, another video on the channel. Uh, big ups to everybody that is tuned in nice and early. Big ups to Sam uh, for the redirect. Uh, big, big up to you guys. Uh, make sure you are smashing the like today. Make sure you are subscribing to the channel if you have not already. Bada bing, bro. Why why am I being a court of fraud already, bro? What's going on? What have I done, bro? What have I done to be called a fraud again already? What's this? It's fraudulence. It's fraudulence from you. So you're the fraud, bro. Anyway, um, make sure you're doing as Letty says and smashing that like button on your way in. Make sure to get that done for me, guys, please. Um, I do appreciate it. Um, make sure you're getting that done for me, people. Uh, much love for that. Um yeah, let's get into this. Let's get in, let's get right into this. Actually, um, let me just quickly change this because we are here for a brand new show that I am doing on my channel, Chord Versus. And in this in this uh, show, basically, what I'm going to do is I get two play uh, two uh, fans from each fan base. They go up against each other in all time elevens and they discuss how we could. Uh, they they basically argue for their case or make their case for their player to get into the combined 11 of overall all-time um, all time teams. Now, today we have a mad one. We have um, Ashraf versus Hussam for the first. I had to make it a banger. For the first one, I had to make it a banger, bro. Yeah, we had to do a good one for you guys. So make sure to stick to stick by for this one because this is going to be a mad video. Um Listen, Liverpool versus Arsenal. Yeah, we're not really rivals, to be honest. We're not really rivals much um, in the in history, except for one time where we where we really uh, went in and won the title against you guys at your ground. Big up to Anfield eighty nine. Big up to Michael Thomas and all them man. Um, but yeah, listen, we are going to get right into this, and let me go ahead and introduce my first guest on the channel um the the arsenal representative because guys listen i am here but i am completely unbiased i'm not gonna sit here and just take arsenal players just because they're arsenal do you know what i mean i'm gonna look at the arguments we're gonna get try and get you guys involved as well um so make sure to be ready for that but we i'm not i'm not just gonna sit here and just put in arsenal players yeah we have to stay. We have to stay um, unbiased for this one. So make sure to stick by for that. But let me introduce the Arsenal representative for today for us um, coming out from the yellow corner, technically, but it's technically the red corner. Um, but yeah, let's introduce him. It's none other than my boy Ashraf, the Maghribi brother, my brother right here. Ashraf, how's it going, my brother? My brother, Saad, how are you doing? <laughs> uh, oh, damn, I'm seeing you, um, what, like 10 hours later? 10, 10 hours yeah. Bro, I, yeah. later. I hope your fast has been good, bro. Ah, oh, it was beautiful. It was lovely. This is me non-fasting, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Big difference. No, no, to be honest, you were all right. You were all right, man. And you didn't seem like you were tired. You should have, seen me, this, you should have right? seen me on Judge Mo's channel, man. I fell asleep. I fell asleep, bro. So oh, I, damn, I missed it. Most channel, it was techie, bro. It was techie. He caught me right. Before, um, got you like right before, right? No, no, right before, right? Like as I woke up out of my like nap, bro. He caught me, man. So I can't lie. But how you doing, my bro? I'm good. I'm good, bro. I'm good. Uh, excited. This this during this inter lull period that I like to call it instead of international break. Um. I'm sorry for your loss. Obviously, I, I well, I I left Brazil winning one nil. I don't know if that's still the same score, um, or if uh, yeah, no, no, Brazil, score. Brazil did win. Brazil did win, man. I can't uh, lie. Look at this, look at this guy. Look at look how fraudulent he is, bro. Look at how fraudulent this guy is. Uh, when have you ever seen a panelist comment on his own on his own thing? And and he sa he says, "Where's the link?" Yeah, this guy can't be asked to just scroll up in the WhatsApp chat. Because I WhatsApped him the link. But it's fine. It's fine. Hassan wants to Hassan wants to make it out like I'm the one that's not organized, yeah? Khalas. Khalas. I'll send you, I'll resend you the link. Yeah. Allah, he's acting like I didn't send it to him already. Allah, this guy's a fraud. Allah, he's a fraud, bro. This guy, Hassan. Yeah, I'll resend you the link now. Yallah. Yeah. This guy, he's a fraud, bro. He's actually a fraud. 
<laughs> Man said, there you are, like as if he had a point, bro, like as if he done something bad. But listen, um, Ash, you already know, man, it's a uh, is arguing against Hassan is a uh, is one thing, man. But I know you, you love this stuff, you you live for this stuff, so mm. I know it's definitely gonna be a this is definitely gonna be a good, um, this is definitely gonna be a good one, it's definitely gonna be a good argument, a good discussion on who gets into the uh. Uh, combined 11 um, So we'll mm. definitely get that done um, But listen guys Make sure you're smashing the like button Hassam is just coming in right real quick So make sure you're smashing that like button Let me know Let me know down below Who is your favourite player um, Either From the Liverpool side or from the Arsenal side Let me know in the chat right now Who are your favourite players But um, yes so Ash 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 I want you to give me your. Actually, should we wait? We'll probably wait. We'll wait till Hassam's here. We'll wait till yeah. Hassam's here, so he so he knows what your all time that you've picked, the all time XI that you've picked, and then and then we'll go we'll go through his. Um, uh, we'll go through his as well. Um, Aaron is saying John Barnes. Uh, Ravi saying Ashfa. Um. Toka saying, add Stevie G and Sim the rest. Can't be asked. <laughs> Ali A is saying, Kenny Daglish. Uh, listen, Kenny Daglish. Oh my God. Uh, Kenny Daglish is a, is a is an older one, bro. He's an older one, but um, big up. Uh, Joseph is saying, uh, Steven Gerrard. Uh, Zop is saying, Daglish as well. Uh, Burkamp, of course. Can't he? You already know, bro. You already know. The, the, the guy, the king, the prince. Yeah. Um, and someone and someone we actually watched, not someone from the 80s era when probably it was still black and white. So there you are. Man <laughs> said, there you are. Uh, hey, you're Barnes. not gonna you're not gonna like Hassan today. Oh <laughs> you're not gonna like Hassan today, then <laughs> if you're saying that. Can't wait uh, to hear the Toka, arguments there. Toka, Toka, with all due respect, have some shame. Have some shame. Have some shame. Please. Yeah? Don't embarrass yourself like that. Please don't embarrass yourself like that. Um, LFC for the double saying Ian Rush. Um, Letty saying Cesc Fabregas. Uh, Alie also coming out with Luis Suarez. MDL just being a fraud. Man said Mustafi has to be there. Yeah, Allah. You know, I... I I, I pray and I thank Allah that I don't have to see Mustafi again. You know, I look back to the previous centre backs that we used to have in the centre back partnerships. I'm like, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, Martin saying 80s was colour TV. <laughs> hey, Martin's a joker, man. Martin's a joker. VVD over Campbell Hold. Okay. Cam uh, Sol Campbell has two champions, uh, has two Premier Leagues. So. What now? Where do we go from here? Where where do we go from here? Yeah, your boy still has to catch up, so relax. Anyway, um, I don't know where Hassam is. I don't know why he's so slow, but he's a fraud. Um, all time Suarez over Henri. You guys are just embarrassing yourself. There's no way. There is no way, bro. Please, what are we doing, bro? What are we doing? Like, let's let's be let's be for real here. What are we doing, man? Um. But yeah, listen, make sure you're smashing the like button. Make sure you are subscribing to the channel, guys. Um, Ash, this question can go to you as... Oh, actually, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Fraud has arrived. Fraud has arrived. Let me let me give him Let me give him the, the perfect intro. Yeah, the perfect intro, because this is going to oh, be... Oh, I know what you're going to play. Is, <laughs> this, is, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is for, for the ones that are late, bro. Yeah, pulling out mad moves. You and, and, and donkeys are the same. What is the difference between you and a donkey? The donkey, you take the whip, you hit him, and, and, and the donkey's like, e or e or that's the donkey. You're a donkey. There you are. There you are. How do you feel getting cussed out by yourself? Yeah. Yourself from the past has cussed you out. These are investments from the past. Hold that. I'm actually not going to do the show until you put me in the background why? and give me a proper intro. Because this is the first time I've come on your channel. Wow. 
fully no, disrespectful it's not the first, hold, it's not it's not the first so he's just so I've redirected me. to the football he's corner me. And he's I'm disrespecting here. me he's disrespecting me by saying this is the first time he's on my channel it's not the first time second he's been time. on my channel twice he's been on my channel twice already second time how disrespectful yes. like second time you didn't even give me a proper okay, intro give me a proper intro you know what you know what hold on hold on and guys without further ado let me introduce the main man from Jordan, you've seen him before. You will see him again from This Is Football, straight from the fighting corners, man. You know, this guy has been fighting battles since uh, the Gerard and Skulls uh, debates. You know, you'll see him just just at fighting any Man United fan that's trying to put Skulls over Gerard. It's none other than the Don Hussam. Is that better? There we go. You see, great arms, great, in, great intro. Right there. See, Keep that's how we do it. Just, uh, just show me a bit of respect. Bro, you get me? Just show me a bit of respect. Second time on the football corner, ninety-seven. You know, big up to Ashraf. You know, who hasn't been disrespectful, unlike you. So, big up to Ashraf as well. Nice to meet you again, brother. Big up to everyone big in up, the chat. Awesome. You guys are liking and subscribing. Um, I think there's only one Arsenal player that gets into this whole uh, XI. Oh, so, man, man, man. yeah, we're gonna have Stop. plenty of debates. You get me. Well, Ash is ready. Listen, guys, let me let me before I get to the super chat, I just want to give you guys a quick quick preview, quick preview of tonight. Bro, and I'm just staring, I'm just there in the middle, like la la. la. <laughs> what I don't oh, understand right. is how did the table break so easy, bro? Like the table just broke like yeah, there was nothing. This is... As if it's WWE, like you know, TLC uh, bro, match or whatever. Listen, like, Al Jazeera at Jordanian TV as well, bro. If you, uh, bro, if you know Al Jazeera as well, well, like every, bro, every time you just go on there, bro, they're just arguing with each other, bro. So it's just it's non-stop, bro. Arcus, basically. Well, like. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, but listen, big up to you guys. Make sure you're liking the video. Make sure you're subscribing to the channel. Anyway, let's get straight into the teams. I am gassed and ready to hear the teams from both sides. Of course, we're going to go to the Arsenal man first. Oh, he's there. The Arsenal man first. We're going to get his all-time XI that is going up against Sam's one. So, um, Ash, let us know who is in your old all-time XI for the Arsenal. Okay, uh, thanks, thanks so much, Sad. So, um, exactly. look, I, I didn't want to be super shameless for this. So, I'm like, man, you know what? I can include players like David O'Leary and Pat Rice and go all the way to. I'm like, man, I haven't watched these guys. I'm not going to sit and do Wikipedia, Google search for everything. So, I'm like, you know what? I'm including players that I've mostly watched um, because it'll be easier to speak about them. But I have included one, two, three players from before my time. Um, just out of respect for their legacy, just out of respect for their status uh, in the game uh, <clears> at Austin. And they're not that far behind, to be honest. It's not like they're in the 80s or, or so. Um, so for me, goalkeeper, I've decided to go with, um, I think fair to say, the greatest English goalkeeper of the last 30 years or so. Um, and that is David Seaman. Um, yeah. Obviously fantastic goalkeeper, super reliable, great shot stopper. Um uh, with his funny ponytail. Uh, I, I can see Hassam smiling already. Like he thinks, oh, Alison is definitely winning this. But anyways, anyways, we'll we'll come to his lineup. I, I'm then. not going to interrupt you. I'm letting you say your team, brother. Fair enough, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. Big up, big up, big up. Um, so yeah, I've decided to go for uh, David Seaman. Um, so right back, I've gone for, I, I mean, the thing is that there are right backs I wanted to like name, obviously like Invincible, Lauren, uh, one of my favorites, even though he didn't win much with us, to be fair, except one mm -hmm. FA Cup, and that is Bakary Sani. I think it's super underrated. Uh, defensively, he was solid and consistent all the time. But um, I had to go for Lee Dixon. Again, one of the three mm -hmm. players that um, I didn't watch, to be fair. But like I, I, he just has so much um, uh, rep about him that I could not ignore him. I mean, one of our most... Uh, um, one of our, not the best right back, and I think had one of the most appearances. I think second or third, just behind... Mm -hmm. Uh, Tony Adams and I think Ray Parler. Uh, center backs, uh, I've gone for Mr. Arsenal himself. And that concludes my three players that are before my time. Tony Adams, 
Um, and Saul Campbell, the guy who uh, we nicely stole from Tottenham, uh, came and won the double with us in his first season. Double, double, uh, double. Saul yeah. Campbell won the double. And hey. we won it, yes, baby. Um, and then left back, I've gone for, I think people can, don't will not necessarily argue this, probably the best left back in Premier League history, uh, Ashley Cole. Um, yes, the guy was such a snake and went to Chelsea, but then they we cannot mm -hmm. forget what he's done with us. Obviously, part of the invincible team. Um, funny enough, he he you know how you say like how people say, like, oh, there are players in the past who cannot fit in this current era because it's quicker and it's different and stuff. I think Ashley Cole is one of these fullbacks who could actually fit in this era really well. Like he was quick, he was very good defensively, um, could score goals, could assist. Um, one of the greatest players of all time, Cristiano said that he's the toughest defender he's ever faced. And uh, this is like, we're talking about Cristiano when he was skillful at United and he would do like step overs and, and take on players, not like the, the mm. striker and efficient Cristiano. Um, midfield. So since we're doing a 4-3-3, um, it was um, like quite difficult to pick. There were obviously many names. Um, and I'd, I wanted to make sure I do justice to some players that also played in the Emirates era. Um, so I've included Vieira, obviously. That's, that's a must. And I, he's obviously going to easily get into the uh, lineup. Yes, I know for the LFC. Yes, this is like from 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, I, I understand. No, 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 no. Um, he's, he's, he's a fraud because he's saying, David, who? Pause. Because his name's Seaman. Uh, well, like, he's ah, a fraud. Fair, fair, These guys fair. are childish. Ram well, like. Look, <laughs> Ramadan, I don't think of all that. It's Ramadan, Ramadan, exactly, bro. Well, yeah, like, my, my brain have some just shame. up. In so, yeah, I'm have some shame. Have some shame. I've gone with uh, Fabio. Uh, Fabio, uh, Fabio Vieira. Whoa, I've gone whoa. With, <laughs> I've, gone, <laughs> I've gone with Vieira. Um, uh, Fabregas um, and Dennis Burkamp. Um, I know people will say he played as a striker, but then he played as a second striker, and there was no 4 3 3 back then. Um, so I think that second striker converted to a 10, anyways. Uh, one of the best players in the Premier League, probably the best Dutch player we've seen in the Premier League, and I would argue like top five Dutch players we've seen of all time. So, uh, incredible, incredible, phenomenal player. Fabregas, Vieira, Burkamp, and my front three. Is obviously striker doesn't need an introduction. The goat, the Premier League goat, hands down, no debate. Uh, maybe Hassam can say Kenny Douglas and all that stuff, and has to like go to Wikipedia and check what Kenny Douglas did. But I'm definitely gonna like say Andre. Like it's, I think it's the easiest pick over there. Right wing. Uh, um, look, my wingers are gonna be controversial. My wingers are gonna be super controversial. There you are. Right. Because I, I was like, okay, you know what? I can put over Mars. I can put Leonberg. Obviously, Invincible again. Incredible. Um, I decided to go with like two who are more recent. One who is definitely not hit the heights yet. But I think by the time he retires, will be considered um, one of our best right wingers to ever play. Uh, Sam is laughing because he knows who I'm going to mention. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I can make a case for him. Up I want to see. Age. I want to see. Yeah, I want to. I want to see. Yeah. Uh, look at this guy. Oh my god, bro! I hate Hassan, bro. He brings on these glasses, bro. Allah, this guy, because he knows who you're gonna put right wing. Yeah, and he's like, I've won this debate already. Allah, he's a fraud. Anyway, yeah. go ahead, Ash. Uh, so <laughs> right winger, I'm picking my star boy, Bokayo Saka. Yes, he's only won one FA Cup. <laughs> and as I said, I could have just picked... And I'll tell you, by the way, by the way, this is something... I don't want to do a spoiler, right? But there's a reason why I picked... This was inspired by Hassam, right? Big up to you, Hassam, because obviously I've seen your videos before, the football terrace and stuff. And Hassam mentioned one thing which I 100% I strongly agree with. I resonate with this. If we are picking between players, because obviously we're discussing quality and capability and career and all that stuff, right? Obviously, career soccer has nothing because he's just started. But if we're picking players based on ability, Hassam, I know, is a strong proponent of this, and that is we shouldn't look at team trophies, right? We shouldn't, right? Because when you're judging individual players, you're judging them based on their quality. Otherwise, Steven Gerrard never gets in ahead of Lampard or ahead of uh, Scholes, obviously, right? But we know that that's false because we know he's probably technically better than both. Um, so I decided to go on with Bukayo Saka because up until his age, I haven't seen a lot of wingers 
as good as him. I think he will surpass Ljungberg. Um, I think he will surpass any of the other right wingers that have played for us. And as I said, I didn't want to go to the 80s and 70s because I just thought it's shameless. I was going to put Van Persie, uh, but then he his best time with us was as a striker. Um, so I thought that's also a bit disingenuous. Uh, on my left, again, is a, is a, is a controversial pick. Um, uh, it, the easiest choice was to go with Robert Perez. Again, invincible winner, multiple league winner and all that stuff. Incredible, incredible winger. Um, I don't know who Sam will pick, maybe Sadio Mani or whoever, but this guy only spent three and a half years with us, but I think he was an incredible, incredible player. And he didn't win much, only two FA Cups. Uh, he was influential in us winning both FA Cups, actually. I decided to go with Alexis Sanchez on the left wing. Okay, no worries, no worries. Okay, fair no, enough. no, Tyler Jones, not Martinelli. Let's 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 relax. Let's relax. Not, and, not Martinelli. And who and who's 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 your <laughs> who's your who's your manager for the for the for the? Ah, you, I mean, there's the... no one else. Obviously, it has to be the one, the legend, the the, the great one, Arsene Wenger. Arsene, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I know, yeah, I know, yeah. Hassan. Some, uh, you know, I mean, he's look at this guy, bro. Don't sip like that. Don't turn in your mic and go. Go <laughs> let. I've been saying so I'm letting the Arsenal players anyway. get their flowers. I'm not saying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Hassam, go ahead with your all-time Liverpool XI that you have brought to the table. Then, first of all, uh, big up everyone in the chat. Make sure guys are liking, make sure guys are subscribing. I think this will genuinely be my easiest W on a stream ever. Um, yeah. You know, the reason why Ashraf can't pick players from the 70s and the 80s is because Liverpool were busy dominating that era, winning Champions League no, and Premier why. Leagues and stuff. I, notice how I didn't interrupt you? I didn't say anything. Fair, um, so, fair, fair, fair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ashraf. Thank you. Give me the same respect I've given you, Akhi. Big up to you, brother. Big up to you. My mic you know, is this good. Let's go. Big up. This shows you the levels difference between Arsenal and Liverpool. Obviously, great club Arsenal, historic club. I think bigger than Chelsea. I think the third biggest club in England. But when you're the biggest, you cook at a different level. Um, you're a chef at a different type of restaurant. You're a five-star chef, you know, Michelin star restaurants and stuff. It's kind of different. Um, so the reason why I'm picking players from the 70s and the 80s is because they're the only English club in history to dominate both Europe and England at the same time, winning four Champions Leagues. People don't realize this. Liverpool were the Real Madrid before Real Madrid in the late 70s, early 80s. Now, let's talk the all-time uh, Liverpool 11. First of all, in goal, uh, I believe regardless of who I pick, I'm genuinely winning this. And it's just not even a conversation. I could go with Ray Clemens. I could go with Bruce Grobelar. Obviously, the spaghetti legs infamously in a Champions League final. Uh, I could go with Alison Becker. And, you know, just to give Ashraf a chance, um, you know, I'm going to go with Alison Becker. But I think this goalkeeper position right here is locked up for one of the Liverpool players because all three were absolutely influential to their football clubs. Um, and I think Alison alongside Manuel Neuer, is probably the most complete goalkeeper in football over the last 20 years. Back four. On to the back four we go. Right hey, back. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Hassan, Hassan. <laughs> Felipe is a pro. That, that's true. Ray Clement won <laughs> trophies at Spurs. He did. Oh, he, that that that's the kind of learn makes him elite, bro. That makes him that elite at the next level, bro. So Ray oh, Clement, man. Bruce Grobelar, Alisson. I'm going to just go Alisson just to give him some flowers, Um, you know, because we ain't had a goalkeeper like that in the modern era. Back four. Two modern era players, two old school players. Right back, Trent Alexander-Arnold. No need for any introductions. Generational talent. Um. You know, if if this guy's name was Trentino, he'd be the prime primary starter for Brazil. But because you have Oli in a waistcoat or managing your country, this is what happens. Center back partnership, two Rolls Royces. Um, you know, first of all, Virgil Van Dijk. Once again, needs no introduction. Almost beat Messi to a Ballon d'Or. That alone is insanity. Um, and the other guy I'm going from the historic eras of Liverpool is Alan Hansen. I'm going Alan Hansen because Alan Hansen was the Virgil van Dijk. He was the Rolls-Royce before the Rolls-Royce, uh, you know, like actually played for us in terms of uh, Virgil van Dijk. He's the, you know, the old score Alan Rolls-Royce. We're talking about seven-time team of the year. We're talking about the team of the century. We're talking about being in the Scottish Hall of Fame and in the English Hall of Fame. We're talking about one of the greatest ever defenders ever in footballing history never mind just this this conversation left back i'm gonna go another old school player 
Steve Nickel, um, one of the first, uh, as a pundit, he's just irritating. But that guy right there won, uh, he literally won player of the year playing as a left back. Unbelievable footballer could play both left back and right back. Uh, incredible, incredible, technically gifted, unreal, unreal player. So I'm going for Steve Nickel. Midfield three, uh, two historic players. Actually, three historic players. Let's go, of course, for the icon of Liverpool. The guy that kept Liverpool afloat over the last, uh, you know, 30 years uh, alone with his performances. Steven Gerrard, the greatest Premier League midfielder I've seen. Absolutely incredible monster. Ability, there is nothing to, to say. Ability, there is nothing to say. Like, if I, I cannot even describe how great that is. that guy is in terms of ability. He does everything. DM, another asshole pundit. But... One of the greatest DMs that the sport have ever seen, Graham Souness. That man was absolutely pivotal for Liverpool Football Club, winning all the trophies that, that we won on those times. Um, captain as well, off, off the side, um, and very underrated footballer. The third midfielder I'm going with is John Barnes. John Barnes, of course, um, transcendental in terms of uh, of. of uh, the talent that he was um, as a footballer. I don't think there are words that would describe who he is as a player because he's absolutely incredible. Um, you know, played in, in Liverpool's successful eras as well, running down the wing inf infamously, uh, you know. Um, so big up to him. Shout out, uh, obviously, I'm going to give a quick shout out to Terry McDermott because he was going to be another guy that was going to mention on this list. But I chose to go with Stevie instead because that guy is a global icon of Liverpool Football Club. You don't get a hotel in Indonesia being called Steven Gerrard Hotel if not, you're not a global icon. Front three, very easy selection for me. Very easy selection for me in terms of uh, front three. On the right, um, obviously, this is going to be the easiest selection of the day for us over here. Mo Salah, um, I think, in my opinion, second best Premier League winger of all time after Cristiano Ronaldo. I have to respect Ronaldo because he won a Ballon d'Or and he had the streets by the balls. So I'm going, um, you know, Mo Salah on the right. Consistency for seven, eight years it cannot cannot be compared, um, you know, to any of the other players. Down the middle. One of the greatest goal scorers in British history, not just, uh, you know, in the Premier League, Ian Rush. Absolute goal scoring machine, scored goals for fun, right foot, left foot, header, everything you need. Even went to play in Italy and banged. Ian Rush is the striker. And on the left is the greatest player mentioned this in this entire list so far. We've mentioned so far up to my players now, 21 players. The greatest. British footballer ever seen, ever known, the king himself, knighted. You don't get knighted if you're just a random guy. Kenny, sir, Kenny Dalglish, of course, is 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 the left winger. Um, you know, and I have to go show respect because people need to understand something. Saad told me, let's just go modern era. Thing is, modern era, Ashraf would have switched up his energy. He said, Oh, invincible, invincible, won the league multiple times, all that shit. If I'm talking about the historic Liverpool, why why are Arsenal and Liverpool big clubs? The reason why Arsenal and Liverpool are big clubs is because both clubs have history. It's because both clubs have been big clubs, big institutions for the last 120 years. So I have to give respect to the people who done it before, to the people who made Liverpool the global institution that it is, like the Rushes and the King Kennys and the and the Graham Sunesses and the John Barneses and the Alan Hansons. Those are the actual people who, who brought Liverpool Football Club to, to, to the limelight to where it is right now. So 100%, I think that is the absolute best. Uh, shout out to John Aldridge. Uh, shout out to Sadio Mane. Shout out to Torres, to Suarez, to all these people. None of them on the level of Rush or King Kenny Douglas. So that's my 11 right there. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, right. Can I you put up Aaron's the... comment now, though? Because Aaron watched that era. You see how he says Bro, I there know my are. stuff. I, I'm, a, I'm a real Liverpool supporter. People know. I know. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not waffling about. But that's anything. the thing is that's that's why it makes makes me laugh when people say, "Oh, Hassan's never been to Anfield." Bro, relax, man. <laughs> the guy could probably sweep you in a in a in a Liverpool quiz. So why are you trying to act that's big right now? Just because you've been to one that's Liverpool right. game, well, like, <laughs> must been to must been to Liverpool to Anfield once and saying you never walk alone, bro. All of a sudden he thinks, bro, he knows he's going, you know, exactly. Time. He's season ticket holder. He's gone no every week. 
He's there. I'm like, bro, relax. You went to one game, bro. <laughs> You're trying to chat to Hassan, bro, just because he's got an accent, bro. He frauds. Anyway, let's get into the nitty gritty stuff, man. Let's get into the first battle, which I'm I'm actually surprised. I'm 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 interested to see how Ash is gonna go ahead with this because I think Allison is definitely a hard one to fight against because you know I personally classify him as uh, the best keeper. Or one of the best keepers I've ever seen, in, in at least uh, the best keeper in the Premier League, era, one of the best in the Premier League era. But it's going to be interesting to see how he gets into this team, obviously with David Seaman and 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 all of that. So <laughs> I don't know why he keeps on showing this badge. I don't know whether he's actually doing something or he's doing. No, it I just purpose. plugged the, the charger. I just plugged the charger. So this, there this you are. Crap doesn't switch off. You get. <laughs> That's fair, fair. Yeah, we don't know, bro, because you always love doing. That's your, that's your, that's your go-to move. Oh, let me Sad, just show you. Uh, you know, I the... don't disrespect Arsenal publicly, so don't do that, Sad. There you are. I'll just call you, you the third biggest club. If Ziad was here, where's your Champions League? That's all he would have said. I've never said yes, that. Yes, because once. no, no, you but I expect fair. that from Chelsea. Chelsea fans, Chelsea fans, when you support Chelsea, there's like a, there's like a, um. It's it, there's there's a maximum Trouble IQ level spot. that you, you have to. to, get. Okay, you no, to no, 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 no. There's a there's a there's a maximum IQ level that you have, and 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 they have some Ch Chelsea fans that are actually way above the IQ level, but but they they allowed them to to support the club anyway. You know, they said, <laughs> you, you know what, we need some we need some. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. Are. Anyway, um, let's get <laughs> let's get right into it, man. Let's get into this. Um, so. We are going to be doing the first matchup, which is David Seaman, pause, versus Alison Becker. Now, um, the fact I don't know that Seaman does... pause alone makes me win. You know, you know this. <laughs> there you are. There you are. Um, Fear Ash... Ramadan. <laughs> Fear Ramadan. Fear Ramadan. <laughs> I hold on. Have I? I... Hold on, hold on. Have I got that Fair clip? Oh, I don't have that clip, bro. I haven't got the clip. I got it on my phone, bro. It's a... Fear Ramadan. Fear Ramadan. <laughs> anyway, let's go to Ash to fight his um or to put his argument out there first for why um uh, David Seaman should be included over um Alison Becker. Ash, the stage is yours, mate. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Saad. Look, look, as I said with David Seaman, I mean, there are three players that I had to pick um, before, like I started watching, just because of their iconic nature. It's not like David Seaman is an unknown name. I mean, there's a reason why when you are like, I think, what, fourth or fifth in, in the most clean sheets list in the Premier League, I mean, that speaks volume. The guy like was with us for like 13 years um, and held his spot. And he was not just our number one keeper. Obviously, he was um, he was also like England England's keeper for so long. Um, won multiple league titles with us, obviously including like two doubles um, where he was our main guy. And look, I, the thing is for me, right? It's it's. I think it's um, easier Ashraf, to make an I argument of. Uh, Do you yes, really want to go down the trophy route? I'm just I'm I'm warning you right now because if I use this logic, Hassam, Hassam, I already. No, 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 no. I already day. told I'm you. I'm warning you right now because if, if I already told you, trophies, I have players that I've mentioned who have like. 15 like trophies with Liverpool. But this you is what's so, like... confusing, Hassam. Hassam, this is what's confusing. Your whole Tell mantra me. every time is you do not look at trophies. Yet when you mention Ian Rush and all these guys, which we know, like obviously like, you've researched as you should have as a Liverpool fan because it's before your time. How will you watch? Obviously, you need to go and research. But unless you have watched them, you won't really have, truly actually, know how great they were. Yeah, I mean, it's I different watching it in replays. Like we have watched games and stuff. I, I really have done. Like, I could have mentioned so many. I could have went to Jan Molby. could have went Terry McDermott. I could have went John Aldridge. There's so many players I genuinely could have mentioned. For, for, for I agree. But for some, I think unless we were watching them, like, live week in, week out, we wouldn't know, right? Because sometimes the games we'll watch are usually, like, highlights where we know this player, like, played an incredible game. Like, I've watched games of Arsenal, like, in 97, 98, like, like replays that you find on YouTube. But, like, you pick games that you're like, oh, yeah, this game was an iconic game. We won that game. So you're obviously going to see the best in, in that team. And... The reason why I don't think the trophy thing makes sense, and by the way, this has nothing to do with Arsenal. Even if I was defending Real Madrid, right, the most historic team in, in football, I actually agree with what you say about not looking at trophies as the main thing. I do think that you should look at it at some point because players who are influential in their teams winning trophies, obviously that should count for something because you're coming to like pressure moments and you're obviously like coming through difficult times or leading your team to the final hurdle there. 
Uh, but I don't think it should be the 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 be all of of, of like deciding if a player is better than the other. Um, obviously, Allison has the advantage of the fact that football has changed because a lot of keepers have to start playing from the back. That's not something that Seaman had to do uh, when he was there, but he was still known for his agility. He was recognized by a lot of keepers. Toldo, obviously, I like, got a great Italian keeper was hailing him as one of the best keepers he's seen. So it's not like. Again, yes, he doesn't have the advantage of Allison of being able to play from the back, but the fact that he maintained his position for like 13 years at a club like Ar Arsenal, where we were winning things, not Arsenal of like the last 10 years where we couldn't win a league or compete anywhere in the Champions League. This is Arsenal that's been winning, whether it's under George Graham or whether it was under Arsene Wenger. Obviously, yes, England were not as successful, but the fact that he was our main keeper for that long um, and won like two doubles with us and obviously like multiple league titles and FA Cups and all like I think that speaks volume of his uh, for him. It's always difficult comparing errors. I get it like comparing obviously Seaman and Allison, but I just feel while Allison has been phenomenal and I agree he's one of the best keepers in the world right now for sure and obviously iconic along with Manuel Neuer and the way he keeps and, and still plays from the back. But I just feel the body of work that Seaman has over like over a decade is, is truly important. I, I think Allison will probably stay like that as well for the next five, six years. But until he does it, we don't know if he will get to that level. Just hypothetically speaking, let's say it, it'll probably not happen because he's well, he's already good. overtaken but... Siemens' level, though, Ashraf. And also, by the way, you know why mm. you lose this argument not because of trophies or longevity or anything. Your your mm. argument in terms of like, um, you know, where the goalkeeper could play because Allison Becker is a complete goalkeeper he could play in this era and the previous era and the era before and the era before like you could take yeah. Alison Becker play him in the 70s and he would still be a great keeper you could play him in the 80s 90s 2000s and he would still be there so this is the thing like I just uh, Arsenal were very talented in so many different positions I just don't think this is the one like because I really think if I brought up any of the three goalkeepers they would have beaten and playing for England at the time is not a flex, Ashraf. You're shameless because there wasn't that many no, options no, no, no. other than David James and other crap goalkeepers. I remember there was a period of time when I was growing up where they where they went so many. They went Chris Kirkland and goal for England. Chris Kirkland. Mm. So let's not act, sit up here and act like there was a plethora of goalkeepers to choose from. And when yeah, Alison Becker still did a big national Brazil, team. and when Alison Becker did play for Brazil, they were successful. Factually speaking, Ederson played the Copa America. They lost. Alison played it. They won. And that's because of his ability as a goalkeeper. So I'm not mentioning trophies. I mean, I'm that mentioning... Copa America, uh, while I respect him, he didn't win it because of him, though. But I, but I, I, I get your point. No, no, no but... I never said that. I never claimed that. But I'm saying, yeah. as a goalkeeper, take Allison right now. Put Allison in the 80s, great keeper. Put him in the 90s, great keeper. 2000s, great keeper. Current era, great keeper. When you have a complete goalkeeper like that, it's very difficult to compete with. The problem is, I just don't think Seaman lives up to to Allison Becker. That's why for me, he has to mm. go in this team. That's 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 what I what I would say. Okay, fair. As long as we keep the consistent thing of trophies and all that stuff, because then the argument. I never makes mentioned sense. trophies. I haven't. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I mentioned no, trophies, because I know you're you gonna no players on this team. You get no. You're gonna mention it later. By the way, are we also no. discussing? Obviously, it doesn't work for seamen, but just for future references, are we also discussing their international achievements while they were at the club? No. I think it should no, be in the book. No, we're not. Why not? We no, we not. can discuss that if a player has performed also in his for his country, not trophies won. I'm talking about performances. So, for example, I wouldn't mention Henri in 98 because, I mean, he had scored two, three goals, but I don't think he was a starter at the time. So, that's different. I'm right? ruined like, Henri's that. legacy for France by himself. I'm very with him. No, he didn't. I actually I'm had an argument with him on space and I completely shot him down with that. It's absolute nonsense. I think, listen, yeah. we'll get to Henri when we get to him, but right now it has to be Alisson and this team. And I'm be, I'm genuinely not being disrespectful. Had I said Clemens, it was going to be Clemens. And had I said Grobler, it was going to be Grobler. All three, in my opinion, are better mm. than David Seaman, with all due respect. Like, even David Seaman's highlight, when we remember him, no no banter, no disrespect, we remember the Ronaldinho chip. That's the reality. So, it's not like he was incredible. He was just a good goal, goalkeeper, solid. Hassan, we could do that with Allison as well. He's had blunders that you could remember of him. Like, let's not do that, bro. No, but I'm saying all the goalkeepers first thing have blunders. Your mind is that moment. That's why I said I'm saying it. I'm not being disrespectful at all. I'm just saying that's genuinely what you first. Yeah, yeah, but that shouldn't hold against. That shouldn't hold against him because that could have happened to any goalkeeper. To be fair, mm. it's true because it's Ronaldinho Gaucho, and today we had to watch the shit Brazil. <laughs> Twenty years later, <laughs> I cannot believe how far they have fallen. <laughs> well, they want from Ronaldinho R9 Rivaldo. To now Vinicius, Rodrigo, and Rafinha. I was like, bro, football has gone down. Henrik. Henrik coming off the bench. Alisson wins. 
Okay. Um, listen, I've heard both arguments, and obviously, I'm doing a poll as well. But I think, obviously, for me, I'm the main like judge, if you want to say, which which is even harder for me because at times I'm gonna have to um, put players for the Liverpool side over my. And listen, I told you guys I'm gonna be completely um, unbiased. I'm not gonna sit here and be biased. Oh, I'm just putting Arsenal players because I want to. Nah, we're not doing that. Um, I do. I do see the argument that, that Ash was making. However, I do think Alisson just wins. And the reason the reason for why he wins for me, the reason why he wins for me is just because if you look at if you look at his body of work so far for Liverpool and you look at the amount of saves that he's made when his when when the the centre back partnership in front of him just failed completely. Like you look at the seasons where where um, Liverpool were playing Jordan Henderson, Fabinho in the back line. Yeah, I look at moments like that. But obviously, you can also say that for Seaman. Um, but Seaman played behind some pretty solid centre back partnerships. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with Allison on this one, and he gets into the team. Um, moving on to the right back side, um, the right back position, and um, we've got who was the first right back team. again? Lauren was it? Le- uh, Lee Dixon. Lee Dixon. Lee Dixon. Hey, that's Dixon. another W. I'm a bit of it for me. It's, it's mm, uh, this one I don't know. This one I don't. don't, don't uh, by don't the way, do, don't it's worse. Dixon, it's easier bro, for you. It's easier yeah. for you if I have said Lauren because Lauren was accepted sometimes defensively. It's easier for you if I would have said Lauren because then the whole argument of Trent is not good defensively is like not exactly the best. Yeah, like, but we all know that's to... not a true. That's not a true thing. That's an argument started mm-hmm. by Chelsea fans because Reese James is on first name basis with a nurse. No. So Hassam, I'm I'm one of to... I'm one of Trent's biggest. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I'm one of Trent's... It's because, you know, Chelsea fans started this agenda, hey. bro. You know what this? Just watch the energy that's for. The bar, did you see bro. What, how Reese James played against Newcastle? Did you see how what happened to him yeah, in that yeah. game? And then he got injured. Then he got red card. Nothing. If Trent had that that game done, خلاص, he would have just been destroyed directly lee dixon for me is like a center back more than a right back like no. lee dixon is more of a defender like a true old school form of defender and this is the problem when you discuss different eras sometimes you have to understand that they lived in a different era they played exactly. in a different era and if you do go lee dixon i'm not going to be mad i really won't but i just think trent as a football player is generational when we first saw Trent Alexander Arnold, it wasn't something normal from an English footballer. Let's let's be honest. It's not like something you see regularly type thing, Ashraf. So like Trent, the the, the stuff Wait, did you say talking... from a footballer or from an English footballer? From an English footballer. Ah yeah, okay. and of course there's Brazil, Argentina, like uh, there is talent pools. But when it comes to English, you know, full backs and right backs and stuff. And by the way, I think one of the things as well that clouds our judgment, and there's a reason why it does. In Premier League modern era history, there isn't that many great right backs. Think about it. Like if we were going left back, Ashley Cole is straight in there directly in terms of like Premier League all-time 11. You put Ashley Cole directly. There is no conversation. Mm -hmm. Like I cannot say Robertson versus Ashley Cole. I can't. But if you're bringing me Gary Neville and Ivanovic and Zabaleta, I can definitely argue for Trent. So that's why for me, after Danny Alves, you know, he's probably... The best and Kafu, shout out Kafu. We are very disrespectful to Kafu. Kafu is incredible. So I think he's probably the best, like, footballer right back I've seen. Like, he's just un- unreal on the ball. And you could see his impact. Like, he can win you a game with a pass. He can win you a game with a cross. He can win you a game with a shot, even Fulham. You know, so there's, for me, Trent is just, with all due respect to Lee Dixon, Trent is, is, is genuinely who I'd go for in this position. Uh, for me, look, uh, I, I rate Trent. I don't think uh, he's as bad as people make him seem. I think he was except defensively um, t- up to two seasons ago. Hassam. I did tell Saad, I think I told him today in, in our stream on my channel, that um, I think Trent is a lot better defensively now in one-on-one situations. Um, yes, sometimes he has Konate obviously bailing him out. But then when you play that kind of football, it obviously happens. Again, yes, he's won a Premier League and an FA Cup. Sorry, and a Champions League, obviously the two major things. Um, and he is being, um, he is a generational player, he's obviously impactful, but 
again, this is a situation where maybe end of his career, it would be a different argument. I think it would be insane to put him right now ahead of someone who's had like over 600 appearances, again, winning multiple leagues. And even if we want, want to discount trophies or not talk about trophies, I mean, they, obviously trophies do matter. You've mentioned them the twice. He was, yeah, You've yeah, yeah. But I'm not, trophies both times. Correct, I'm correct. Saying, but that's I not the reason. Chat. Did you notice know how Hassan, I didn't Hassan, say Hassan, a word Hassan, about trophies? I, I didn't say a word. But the reason, about, I as I said, when you're... I didn't do yes, this. But Hussam, I'm, saying, I'm saying, saying when you're picking when you're picking someone, when you're picking someone, when you're talking about trophies and you're trying to say that this guy was influential in us doing that. I mean, back then in the in what in the 90, 90, 1998 team, when we had that legendary back four, obviously, like Lee Dixon was part of it, right? And yes, it's different, it's difficult to compare errors because you didn't have bombing fullbacks. And this is why sometimes fullbacks like Gary Neville, I hate him. I hate him as a pundit, I hate him as as, as a United legend. But the fact is. He does get disrespected because he doesn't pull up those crazy assists that Arnold or Danny Alves or the current era of fullbacks were doing over the last 10 years. I think Lee Dixon is exactly like that. Um, he is obviously a legend. He's played over like 600 games. Um, the guy had apparently like very good touch as well with both his feet. And yeah, he only scored like 28 goals, which some, maybe someone like Trent will probably surpass. But to score 28 goals as that type of fullback in that type of period, I think it's still a fantastic um, a fantastic achievement. So for me, it has to be Lee Dixon. I think he's just had a long... With Allison. I understand what you're saying because even though he's played a bit less than... Not a bit less. He's played way less than David Seaman. But that body of work in that concentrated era is so damn good and so high, mm -hmm. right? And there's basically no flaws at all in Allison's game that it's easy to use that to compensate for the lack of longevity yet, right? I don't think Arnold has that. I think because Arnold has or has had a deficiency in his game as a fullback, because we say like Reese James, forget Reese James, like even like when it comes to like defenders like Kyle Walker or Ben White for that matter, I don't think Trent is as good as Ben White defensively. I think he's good. I don't think he's shit as people say, but I don't think he's he's on that level. Yeah, Whereas Lee Dixon, changed, I think was... Football's changed. Yeah, I, I agree, but it, it shouldn't... No, but hear me it shouldn't change to the point where they cannot defend at all. If me and you and Sad right now mm -hmm. meet 100 managers and say, would you rather have an attacking fullback or a defensive fullback? Just a blanket question. 95% are saying attacking fullback. This is this is just the reality of, of where football is at. And if you look at the Not the best, though. Years, okay, but if you look at the last 10 years, the successful clubs had the Danny Alvarez's and they had the Marcelo's and they had like they had the attacking fullbacks. They did not have the defensive fullbacks, if you would like. They did not have the fullback who could just defend, basically. And by the way, even if we're talking on an individual basis, Trent's been in the team of the season three times, age 25. Lee Dixon in his whole career had two team of the season appearances, as an example. Yeah. So, like, from an individual basis as well, we're talking about a player who's broken Guinness World Records. He has the Guinness World Records for most assists in a season by a defender. That's not something I can bypass. And I'm I'm talking about just purely ability as well. As a footballer, he's just incredible as well. Would you not I say agree, would I, you I not said... say that the would you uh, sorry, would you not say that the because in the day and age that we're at, there are more attacking uh, fullbacks. Fullbacks. That I think I think it the systems allow them more to to be able to attack, be able to, assist, be able to shoot. 100%. So, so uh, Lee, if Lee Dixon is able to 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 do that, but Lee Dixon wouldn't be a right but, back in this era. He'd be okay, a so you don't know that. Uh, no, no, but you don't but, know but, that. But we, we, we don't that at the moment for what I think for what for what we're saying. We don't know that until until we uh, if we actually see him in here. Yeah, we don't know where he's gonna be. Yeah, he may be more flat. He may yeah. no, no. I'm not even trying to say it like that. I'm just trying to say. Can my, I out the whole thing? I have to... one player. So if you wanted to be Lee Dixon, no problem. No, but one sec, one sec, Hassan. And and by the way, you mentioned things about uh, great managers, but then Pep, who's the greatest manager probably of all time, has reverted back to going to fullbacks that defend first, right? So he actually Kyle scrapped Walker the is yes. Not a first fullback. He is a defender. What do you mean? Of course he is. No, he's Kyle not Walker that is good not going forward. Fullback at all. Kyle no, Walker he is Hassan. No, he Ashraf. isn't. How is he an offensive Kyle fullback Walker when he doesn't get those many assists? He doesn't score longest. goals. Kyle Walker is because... the longest under Pep as a fullback. Hassan, and he's the most yes, but his game has changed. He used to be the kind of fullback that used to bomb forward and used to be susceptible defensively. Over the last four or five years, that's changed. He's actually got a reputation for defending one-on-ones. That's why when people make that joke about when Grealish was saying, oh, whoever got past you 
who's ever dribbled past you, not Mbappe, not Vinicius Jr., not Neymar. That's why when they asked Henri the question as well, if you played on his era, would you have been able to overtake Kyle Walker? Would you have been able to dribble past him? Because he's got that reputation over the last three, four years of being a good defensive fullback. And by the way, sometimes he is to sub defensively because he sleeps when he's not marking some plays, which is why in the finals of the Champions League, he didn't start Kyle Walker. He started Akanji. Akanji is not an attacking fullback. He's not even a fullback in the first place. So that's why I feel like in this current situation, Lee Dixon would still do well. And now the teams are pressing the way they are with, with the way Klopp is doing it, the way Pep was doing it, obviously. Even Arsenal are doing it to that level. That allows fullbacks as well to go forward. I don't think back then in the, in the 90s and all, and the early 2000s, Arsenal had that, or teams played that kind of style as much, which allowed fullbacks to go more. It was more like, you just need to defend first, and if you can do the overlapping run and cross, then great. And that's why a lot of these fullbacks didn't get those crazy assists that uh, Trent is getting now. Go on, corrupt judge. Let me vote the Arsenal player. Go on. Even though 75% I mean, he didn't vote, of the you know, chat you know are what? saying... No, he no. didn't vote Seaman. The, the, listen, the, the, polls, the polls are just to get a general basis of where the, where the audience are at. But the, the final vote come, always stands with me. It always sits with me, the final vote. Trent is a match winner. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Trent is a match winner. But all I'm saying is the argument that... The argument that Ash made there is actually a very good argument. That even in an era where players weren't like that, they weren't going forward and weren't assisting. It was mainly defensive, bro. And he was still able to do that and still get numbers up there, bro. Is very impressive. Is very Gary impressive. Neville I know Trent, that. Yeah. I know that. Huh? Gary Neville or Trent? Yeah, why are you trying to start this, bro? Why is this guy? But can you just answer? Another... Can you answer? This guy's going into a whole another. Can you answer? Can you no, answer? but there Gary is. Neville but but Hassan, there is an argument to say that. Be honest. Gary Neville or Trent Sad? No, no, Ashraf, let him answer. Gary okay, Neville yeah, let him answer. Because he, he's trying to say, oh, if you can you answer? Can you answer for one? Stop sitting on the fence, Gary Neville or Trent? Trent. Gary Neville was even better than Lee Dixon and at what the fuck you just I, I don't think so. By the way, I don't think so. I genuinely, I think Lee Dixon doesn't he get was. the thing because this is, by the way, for some, this is the exact he argument people make for schools and gigs, right? They say he's automatically the best because of the leagues. The reason why they were the best, obviously they had world-class players all leagues. over. I never mentioned leagues. I'm no, but I'm saying that's why Gary Neville, that's why Gary Neville. And getting the assists, that's what Gary Neville has. So no, Gary he didn't. Neville, Gary Neville scored so five goals in his entire United right career. Neville, then he's better th than Dixon by definition. But I Trent don't think is Neville is better than Dixon. He's been three times in the, the team of the season already, age 25. He's broken world Some. records. He's been in this. Some, that's Gary, Neville, has, Sam, Gary Neville has played 400 games for United and scored five goals. Lee Dixon has played 400 and something and scored 28 goals. It's not the same. Lee Dixon was better going forward. I actually think Lee Dixon was a better fullback. But the reason why Gary Neville keeps getting put in those things, of course, he's a world-class fullback at the time. I'm not going to disrespect him. But I'm just saying sometimes there are there are players of United who, yes, get disrespected because they've won so many trophies. They don't get that recognition. They're like, oh, it's the team. It's the manager. But Gary Neville, I think, is a product of one of these players who is amazing, incredible, but sometimes he gets slightly more overhyped because he was in a team that won like, what, he Bro, won, what, eight, nine, ten Premier he's Leagues? He's part of the, he's part of the class of, um, uh, the class of, 90, 90 exactly, bro, right these back. guys, these guys, no, no, bro, bro, bro. this, uh, I don't even know how this is gonna happen, bro. Well, like this is two days in a row that my shirts have, my shows have gone too long, bro. I didn't even realize this is gonna be a mad long. I just wanna, I just wanna answer, Philippe. Right Philippe I didn't say, Philippe. I was saying Lee Dixon scored overall twenty eight goals, not in one season. Gary Neville scored five overall his entire career at United. Oh, he's talking no, about his other comment. You put, yeah. you put up the, the right comment at the start, anyway. Saad, you have to be fair here. I'm gonna be real with you. Khalas, yalla, judge, give us the answer. Uh, listen, I'm I'm being fair. I just think the argument that um the argument that Ashraf put was a very good argument. Um and for that I have to listen, I have to I have to I have to I have to put Lee Dixon in there for the for this right back position. Yeah, now yeah. we're gonna yeah, relax, calm down. You're acting you're acting like I'm going for every Arsenal play, and that's it. Khalas, I gave you Alison. Okay, so we'll see the center back partnership now. We'll see. You don't get okay. any of them, okay. just so you know. Okay. We'll no, see. I do. We'll see, no, bro. No. We'll see. <laughs> I don't care if he's Mr. Arsenal. That's an Arsenal thing. That's nothing. Nah, to do with Mr. Arsenal. Come on. 
He bro, doesn't relax. get them. He's not better relax. than Hansen. He's relax. not better than Hansen. He's not better than Hansen. Captain, bro. When you think of captain, you think of that guy, bro. Bro, He's Alan Hansen is in the Scottish and English Hall of Fame. And he was literally a Rolls Royce before his time. And and we're okay. being we're actually being disrespectful now. See, this is why when you have an Arsenal, so, judge, you're never gonna be honest. Never gonna be honest. Look, you know, look, you I, I'll look at, just you know if you go look at who Alan Hansen is, you know you you're gonna be a long day for you. You know this, right? You know that this guy he he was in the team of the season for eight years in a row. You, you are aware of this? You know you know he was like he was literally the centre back at Liverpool for 16 years in the most dominant era of Liverpool Football Club. Do you understand who we're talking about here? Like, do you understand we're okay. talking about that? Let's guy? let's 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 do let's do the arguments. Um, so we'll, center we're back let, partnership. Uh, do you guys want to go center back partnerships? We can do them singularly. Or would, yeah, yeah, I don't. Back, I, but since you took right back, it's going to be difficult now. No, no, no. It's not going to be difficult. there. You are. Look for me. For me, if so I had to pick, obviously, being fair, but you're not say... being fair. So how can I be fair? I'm. No, 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 no. fair. I'm trying to be fair as well. Put... I'm trying to be fair. Bro, you know what? Oh, okay, you can God. have Lee Dixon. You can have Lee Dixon. You get me? Like two years from now, anyway, this won't be a combo, but we'll have Lee Dixon. You get yeah, me? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, Felipe, like as we mentioned, we're not. I know he's won. Eight, I mean, as I didn't know, but Hassan mentioned he's won eight titles, two FA Cups. We mentioned we're not going to talk about trophies as the main thing unless. He was like the main guy that won you the trophies, right? So I haven't watched him. I'll, I'll take Hassam's word for it. I'll just make a quick argument for Tony Adams. If I had to pick, I would have picked Tony Adams and Virgil van Dijk. Um, big up to Sol Campbell. I will like talk about him a little bit. But for me, with 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 Tony Adams, I mean, as, as Hassam said, he was known Mr. Arsenal. If you are one of the biggest clubs in England, the third biggest to be specific right now, uh, and you're literally known as Mr. Arsenal, that means you obviously must have done something incredible. Like this guy was our captain at what, the age of 21? To be a captain at the age of 21 of a team like Arsenal is not easy, right? Um, and we're, again, we're not talking about when Fabregas became captain at 21 at a team that had no one else and had sold all their main stars. We're talking about a team that was winning stuff, a team that was competing for trophies, a team that won the league at Liverpool um, in 89 and again, like, won double later in 98 and 2002. Um, so he was there with us for, like, what, 20 years um, obviously, he has that incredible uh, goal against Everton in the Premier League that like gets spoken about like till now. Um, fantastic defensively, um, really good on the ball as well. Again, I, I'm not gonna take Hassam's word about how Alan Hansen was on the ball and stuff, so maybe um, he was better. But I think Tony Adams for that time was a complete defender. He was a complete defender in everything he did. He was obviously an incredible, incredible leader. People still talk about him now mm -hmm. as being uh, one of the best captains we've ever seen. Um, in the Premier League, and that's obviously not uh, an easy feature. And obviously, we talk about like, did he win things? Because I, I, I don't believe in trophies like making the player, but you have to have something at the very least, right? Like for people who watch basketball, like everyone knows how Allen Iverson was incredible, but nobody's ever going to put him as one of the greatest because he's never won like a ring, right? So you have to have at least something in your locker. Obviously, like Liverpool players have that in abundance, and he has won multiple leagues. I think like three leagues, if I'm not wrong, or four. Um, and I think three FA Cups. So and 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 people tell us that we haven't won any European trophy. He won the European Cup in his cup with us, right? In in '94, which was uh, a thing back then, and it was obviously a big European trophy. So he even has European her heritage. But yeah. Okay, Ashraf, I'm not going to be disrespectful. Big up to Tony Adams. Big up to Saul Campbell. I'll, I'm I'm glad we agree on Virgil, so there is no need to argue. Put Virgil in this team now. Alan Hansen essentially versus Tony Adams. <laughs> Does yeah, hold on, does, on does, Virgil, does 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 Virgil even get into this team or is it Alan Hansen and uh oh, um, here we go Antonio Bro Adams? Virgil van Dijk. if we if we're oh, really no, talking uh, so I, Virgil, I think Tony Adams has to be if there if we're if we're really talking about the uh, isn't the judge supposed to let the two defendants yeah. speak first before making a judgment? <laughs> Look at them smiling. <laughs> you just know, guys. You know I was set up. I was set up from the start. The judge is an Arsenal fan. Imagine. Imagine. Basically, bro, I really should have bought more, bro. Extreme, but it's like the member of a far-right thing putting a Muslim in jail. And he's the judge. <laughs> this is basically what's happening right here. This guy is an Arsenal <laughs> fan himself. And I'm supposed to sit up here. You know, honestly, <laughs> sad. Wallah, if you're a true football man, you just select two Liverpool players and you just keep it stepping. Virgil van Dijk almost beat Lionel Andres Messi to a Ballon d'Or. 
This guy could have play, played old school, could have played new school, could have played in any, any era of football you want. He could have played next to Nesta and Maldini for AC Milan and he would fit right in. He could have take, he could have played the Yap Yam, Stamro and he would have fit right in like a glove. Alan Hansen time now, since, you know, I'll educate you guys a little bit. I'm not saying it in a condescending manner, but you just don't know about my historical players. Alan Hansen is the Rolls Royce before his time. You say, could he play in this era? He could play for Pep Guardiola easily. Alan Hansen could pass the ball at an incredible level. And he was the starting center back. He's mentioning trophies. You mentioned, not me. You opened up the can of worms. Alan Hansen has eight league titles, seven domestic cups combined, and three Champions Leagues. As the starting center back and main defender in every single one of them. Because stuff changed around him. So there was a different right back, there was a different keeper, there were different center back partners, and there was a different left back. So around him, stuff changed. So you didn't have the same exact ones. So you had different partners alongside <coughs> alongside Alan Hansen. So you had the different defenders, you had the, you know, the different players around him, in front of him, and stuff like that. And he was still there. So he was still there as a part of that team. So you've had players all around him. Completely different, completely changed, and he was still the, the 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 guy in that defense. So if you're talking about Mr. Arsenal, we're talking about a guy once again individual. Not some gonna mention individual Mr. stuff. Liverpool. This guy is in the English Hall of Fame, in the Scottish Hall of Fame. He is in the Football League 100 Legends, greatest 100 Legends of all time. He's in the Team of the Century, both Team of the Centuries made. He was in the overall Team of the Century when they combined both as well. And this guy was in the team of the season for seven years. So we're talking about a guy individually that was unbelievable. This is why for me, the centre-back partnership, I'm not being disingenuous. You want to take Lee Dixon, no problem. But the centre-back partnership, big up to Tony Adams, big up to Saul Campbell, but they're not levels to Alan Hansen at all. Alan Hansen has so to be in this team. Question, Hassan, then. Okay. Yeah. You make a good argument for Alan Hansen. I completely understand why you're saying because if he was I think he has part of a, a very good but yeah, yeah, if he was part of a consistent winning team and you said things have changed, fair enough. Why does Virgil van Dijk get ahead of Tony uh, Tony Adams? And don't say the Ballon d'Or because even if you want to make that argument, he was the second best player in the world that year. That's still one year. That doesn't show longevity. We all know once he got that Pickford injury, he wasn't the same for the next two seasons. Yes, this season he is the best centre-back in the world, or at least top three for sure. Right, He's regained that form. I remember the season you guys were going for the quad, a lot of Liverpool fans, maybe not yourself, right? So maybe it wasn't true, but a lot of Liverpool fans were saying Matip up, was the best this. defender that year. I'm, no, I'm no, not, no, we I'm can't do this because... What a lot of Arsenal fans said, forget uh, them, speak... Uh, about Tony Adams? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Speak, fair, okay, speak fair, about fair. what so, I said. So I'll tell Forget you what I've seen. Because that you season, know the people that we spoke ago. to at the time, some people have an edginess kink and they like to be edgy. And you know this. This is the fact. Fair. You know? So then, How many times have you heard Matip was the better centre-back and Konati was the better centre-back and Gomez was the better centre-back? We've heard this edgy shit all, all this time. Hassan, Virgil van Dijk, so, this season, just look at this season alone. This, this guy season, I agree. Konate, Matip, Gomez, Kwanza, and still, still has been the best centre-back. That I agree like with that, but Hassam, do you not did you do you not agree that once he got that injury for the next two seasons there was a drop off? Next two seasons, meaning last season and the quad season, there was a drop off in his quality. I disagree. I only think I, he, I don't think I it was the think same. He, last season, he, I think only, I only think last season was his bad season. That's it. I think he had one Hussam, bad season. By the way, consistency. One, don't let the yeah. Messi thing and the and the and the Ronaldo thing cloud our judgment. This guy since Southampton has been consistent. I'm talking about before he even joined us. He he was when we were doing team of the season when he was at Southampton, he was in team of the season at Southampton. Never mind joining Liverpool mid-season, none of that. So this is what yeah, I'm but saying. That was one season before. You know what? Even if I give him that, which I cannot give him that, because yes, he was good for Southampton, but he hadn't done it at the high level yet. And I by the way, like we mentioned anyway. No, no, very Sam, we mentioned we mentioned we're not gonna talk about other players anyway. that outside. Why are you taking it back? Why are you taking because it back? You, I'll, I'll explain you to you why. Bertrand. I'll explain to you why. I'll explain to you why. Because my you just want to make sure you get an Arsenal player in there, essentially. No, no, no. I, wallahi, qasaman billah, no. Wallahi, I'll explain to you my, my logic, yeah? <laughs> my reason for putting Tony Adams and Virgil van Dijk is because I genuinely thought that the best you guys would have had is Virgil van Dijk. Because as I said, I'm not going to go and do research on the Liverpool, Liverpool players from the 70s and 80s. Because you made a good <laughs> argument for Alan Hansen, 
my argument was never Van Dyke over Tony Adams. My argument was Tony Adams, then Van Dyke, right? So when you made a good argument for Alan Hansen, Alan Hansen for me, yes, he leapfrogs Van Dyke. You know what? Fair enough. I'll even give it to you that you made such a good argument. He leapfrogs Tony Adams as well. So I have mm, no idea and I, I have no issues with that whatsoever because the argument was good. But Tony Adams is always ahead of Virgil van Dyke. Again, the longevity and everything does make sense. And Tony Adams has done it for a very long time. I we cannot think, ignore longevity. I don't longe agree with always ahead, though. Based, like, I, don't, I don't agree with the always ahead logic. I really don't. I just think I, you're I, picking I van Dyke from three seasons. Three seasons. I think there are two centre-backs in the Premier League that are better than Virgil van Dyke. Rio Ferdinand and John Terry. I believe John Terry why? is number one. Why are they better? I'll, I'll tell you why. John Terry is the greatest centre-back I've seen on an individual basis. That guy is complete, could do everything, and he was in the World XI five years in a row. So we're talking about a player that 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 even with the English bias, because at the time, Barcelona and Madrid were dominating. Even then, he got ahead of the PKs and the Puyols and the Ramoses and stuff. For me, Terry is unbelievable. Virgil van Dijk is a centre-back that's built in a lab. B lit quite literally built in a lab. Anything that you want from him, pace, power, passing, heading ability. And now he's shown us a new level of him, leadership, that we didn't see before as well. So for me, I don't put Tony Adams above Virgil van Dijk anyway in a general argument. If, if we were doing a Premier League all-time 11, it would be Adams and Virgil. But if we're doing an all-time one, now I have to say thank you, Tony Adams. I appreciate you. You're Mr. Arsenal. All, all due respect. But it has to be, it has to be Alan Hansen. So for Hassan, me, it's the question. two Rolls-Royces. Yes. Question. If you had to just pick on their peak, so don't forget longevity, just their peak, the best ever of Van Dyke and the best ever of Terry and the best ever of Ferdinand, who are you putting first? Peak. Just the peak. Yes. No trophies. I mean, on, a one, no on, long a, on a one season basis, factually yes. speaking, no yes. one got to Van Dyke level. Exactly. So my point is, exactly. That's my point. The reason why Van Dyke is in that conversation, and I agree with you in terms of just... You're me, arguing for I, Van Dyke. No, 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 I'm not. It's coming to my point. My argument is the reason why you would honest. pick Van Dyke... No, no, one second, one second, Hassan. The reason why I'm saying Van Dyke just in peak, because his peak was at such a high level. But my point still stands that the reason John Terry and Ferdinand get over him overall in the rankings is purely based on longevity if van no, dyke does what he's doing it's right now i disagree one second, one second. let me land Please let me land let me land. let me just land on this longevity it's not it's i didn't longevity. say you said that i didn't say you said that. i'm saying i'm saying that if van dyke does what he's doing right now for the next four or five seasons with liverpool there'll be no argument about him being the best center back in premier league era right because now he's he would have done what he's been doing at a very high level for a very long time i just know and by the way again to bring up like philippe's point because philip said 17, 18, 18, 19, all that stuff. 17, 18, let's be honest, he joined at half season, right? And we're only going to discuss what he's done. Before he joined. That's why no, I no, no, but when, yes, but I asked Saad about this, and Saad, you can correct me if I'm wrong. We're not discussing what players did at other clubs in England, right? That's why, because like, yeah, yeah. that was it's, an it's, argument it's, that I had. So that, if we uh, look, 100%, 100%, Liverpool, 100%, Liverpool, so only, if we yeah. look, level. I'm saying exactly. about the level. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. So, but I'm saying because if we look there. at Liverpool, if we look at Liverpool, he did half a season in 17-18, right? He did 18-19, phenomenal season. He did 19-20, so that's two and a half seasons. 20-21-22, I agree he was good, but he wasn't the same Van Dijk because he just came back from injury. Mm. He didn't look the same. You know what? Forget what Liverpool fans said. I agree that I think Matip looked better that year. Not because Matip is a better defender. It's just that he had a better season. That's it. I'm not saying he was a better defender Matic than Van Dijk. I don't think the best, second best center back in that year. It was Konate. I know Konate. Konate didn't start all most games. I think Konate started. Konate was our best wrong. player in the Champions League final. So like, uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Matic but the point wasn't is even there. So so the when, all, is, when, she, when push comes to shove, Champions League final and playing Real Madrid, Klopp went with Konate. Not even Matic. Yeah, so the, that alone. Hassan, if, the right. point is, even if I even if I give you that season, even if I give you that season, that's still three and a half or four and a half seasons. That he's had where he was fantastic. He was world class. Tony Adams had a lot more, which is why I'm saying, and I agree, this is the same Trent argument. By the time Van Dyke retires, as long as he doesn't leave at the summer, he will 100% surpass not just Tony Adams, I think he'll surpass I, I think he's better right Ferdinand now. as well. I'll be honest uh, with you. Look, I've gotten keeper, you've gotten right back. You're probably going to get the left back. So I, I have to get the two center backs because then we're disrespecting the greatness of Liverpool Football Club. This football club okay. is, is is bigger than that's Arsenal. Fair. Let's say it that's fair. And these people, because I listen, I can argue Steve Nickel against Ashley Cole. I'll be honest with you. 
But I can give an Arsenal player his flowers too. So I'll, I'll, I'll say it when it comes to left back. But the center back partnership, I'm sorry. With all due respect to Tony Adams, massive respect to him. But these Look, two, I'm talking about, hear me, I'm talking about the Rolls Royce. I'm saying yeah, there's yeah. two Rolls Royces in my garage. No, no, because you know what it is, Aaron? I can be non-biased and I can be honest. I will genuinely vote for Arsenal players in this as well. I'm not just going to fight for my own players. But the centre-back partnership has got to be those two. I'm talking about a centre-back built in a lab who almost beat Bessie to Ballon d'Or. And I'm talking about the best centre-back in the entire country and in Europe for a 15-year period. I'm talking about like I'm talking about him and him in a different era. So like I'm I'm sorry, Alan Hansen could play for Pep today, and Virgil could play in the 70s, 80s, 90s, any era. He could play in the 50s when they were playing with balls made from socks. Like he could play anywhere. I'm talking about individually. Shout out to uh, Tony uh, Adams, Mr. Arsenal and shit. I will I'm say not this. Argue left back personally. That's why I have yeah, to yeah. have the center back partnerships. I'm going to be honest. Hassam, I, I, will, I, I, I will say this. Yeah, yeah. We ain't about to do this. We're being disrespectful. Okay, okay. Hassam, Hassam I, I will. No, we're not, we're not going to have four because it was only going to be like three, right? But, anyways, I will say this. While I, I, I obviously love Tony Adams, a legend of the club and everything, but Van Dyke is not a defender I would mind losing to because I, I do rate him quite highly. So, if that's the logic, and I think for me, Ashley Cole has to get in the team. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, mind that setup. Two Arsenal, two Liverpool. That's not bad. Listen, um, I think, stop it, stop I think it. that, um, yeah, bro, he's such a fraud. Okay, Hassan fine. has We're made a go... good argument. Say it. No, no, no. Say Hassan, Hassan, Hassan like has actually. Yeah, but so did I. But so did, so Hassan, did I. Hassan. No, no. no I, I, think, I think the thing is, there's uh, guys. There's a reason why I picked Hassan and Ash because these guys are two guys that I've seen. With my very own eyes, make the perfect arguments, bro. They you can't press them. You just you can't press them in a room, bro. If they if they're in a, in a debate, you can't press them, bro. They they'll wiggle out of it somehow. And by and the way, up, big up to us. Uh, We're making uh, arguments for players that we didn't even watch. So like that shows yeah. the exactly. That's what I'm saying, bro. It's crazy. So listen for this one. I just think that Hassan won. He just inched it a bit over. So I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it to Hassan. Um, I think he made a very good argument there for, um, listen, Alan Hansen, um, looking at what he's won and looking at, we have to respect. We have to respect because I never take away, I'm, I'm not like, I, I genuinely despise fans that just think, oh, it's still not the Premier League though, so it's not the greatest. Bro, it was so much more harder back then to, to play football, bro. The level was was so much harder than the, the perfectly weighed balls that they have now that they're playing with you know it's 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 pumped up to the perfect um you know feel so you're there you you're playing with the best ball like bro it's it's so difficult um so yeah i'm gonna give this to Hassan. also virgil van dyke listen i think he's generational I, he is generational bro he's he's one of the center backs that comes once every 50 uh 100 years let's let's face it bro he okay it, he has he has made a very good point there that he can fit in any era. God, by the way, you got something made that threat, so I have to speed up a little bit as much. As we can. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah we'll um, definitely speed up the other ones. Yeah, yeah, let's go to let's go to left back, guys, and uh, just quickly give me Ask your. Um... <laughs> Look, even he's agreed with it. So if we want to speed things up, might as well just put him in and move on. Like if the Big when the second Steve greatest Nichols, very underrated. Big I up. Hate him as a I knew Hassan was gonna say that, bro. I said, "Hold on, Ashley, oh, listen, think it is big I think this guy could have played in any era, and I think I as well. Uh, Ashley Cole was the only player in the golden generation to actually play at the same level for his country that he did for the club as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that, and that's, and and to be honest, even including just the, uh, but anyway, halas Ashley Cole. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Right, the midfield, this is going to be arguments I already know, but hopefully we can get through it quickly. Let's go to the um, the first midfielder. Very easy. Um, well, you know, if you told me it would be all out war, I would have told you we, we could have had just a full ass just argument stream. I would have been ready. Bro, been ready listen, yes, but, but bro, there was. There was listen, well, I didn't like, even, uh, I didn't think it'll go like this, Allah. Yeah, I don't think it'll go like this either. I, I didn't realize guys, an hour bro. and ten minutes and we just completed back bro, five. That's I told you guys, I, I, these guys are both frauds, yeah, because I told them it's versus. You're going to be debating each other. I picked you uh, both specifically because you're good at okay, arguing. Okay, Scott, I have a suggestion. Yeah, I have okay. a suggestion. So to speed things up for you guys so that you guys can make today a gal thing, like, let's, I'll make my argument for my midfield. He'll make his argument and then you just... Yes. Remind me. 
my three. Oh, I mean, I picked uh, obviously in my own eleven. I picked Fabregas, Vieira, and Burkham. If I was to do a combined, I'm gonna be hundred percent honest. Uh, I love Fabregas. I can easily make a strong argument for him being like someone who should be there in like one of the best midfielders to ever play in the Premier League. Um, but I do respect Gerard. I don't think we should like people always say like, oh, he didn't win the Premier League again. I'm not someone who only look at trophies. I think trophies do matter. If he had zero trophies, that's a whole different conversation. But for me, I would pick Vieira, Gerard, and and um, Dennis Bergkamp. Very simply, Vieira, the most complete midfielder I've ever seen in the Premier League. There's a reason why when other midfielders that are big and strong came later, they started comparing him to Vieira, like Yaya Toure or the new Vieira, or Abu Dhabi mm. when we thought he's going to be the new Vieira, and obviously he never lived up to that hype um, with all the injuries and stuff. He could tackle, he could win the ball. He was such a good midfielder technically as well. Uh, could mm. score goals. Could like he was good in the air. Um, had no flaw to his game whatsoever. Um, could play as a six, could play as an eight. So for me, Vieira definitely has to be there. Gerard, uh, technically one of the best midfielders to ever play. Uh, could play as a DM, played as a winger as well um, in many games. So that obviously tells you a lot about how versatile he was. Um, but and can't again, be midfield. that's where I feel like you're just. This is a bit no, disingenuous. I, uh, no, he can play as a 10. He can definitely play as a 10. Because where he played for Arsenal was anyways as a second striker. And back then for Sam, we played 4-4-2. There was no second striker. There was no attacking mid. We used to play with a two-pivot midfield, a pivot midfield, and then the second striker. It was the 4-3-3 three, three three before, wait. It was the 4-3-3 three, exactly. three before 4-3-3. Three, three. Yeah, exactly. I, well, the Cup was like a second striker, not a 10. 10 is like Lampard, you know? No, but Lampard was more of an eight. But the reason I'm putting him in this formation as a ten is because there was no ten back then. So if because by by that logic, I should say let's do. I four, thought we were going to go Bergkamp up top and Henri on the left. That's what I thought. No, no, no. B people keep saying this. Yes, he used to come from the left, but the fact is, on paper, he used to start as a striker. The reason he used to go on the left is because he had that freedom to drift when he want wanted to. I don't think that should restrict him now to suddenly being like. Or put him as a left winger. He wasn't a left winger though. Like he was a striker who drifted on the left mm. a lot to make those kind of runs. So for me, Burkamp has to be as a ten. Uh, if we are doing a four-three-three, if we are doing a four-four-two, then obviously I would put him as a as a second striker because for me, as I said, the best Dutch player to ever play in the Premier League. Incredible technique. People still talk about his Newcastle goal. Some jealous, salty people are talking about how it was just flukish. Um, it means you don't understand football or you've never played. You have no IQ yeah. to understand that what he did was pure skill because it's all like that's the only good skill and the only good touch he's ever had in his life. Then I would understand, yeah, mm -hmm. fair enough. It could have been flukish. The fact that he's done this a million, million times, it clearly shows that he's he he did obviously intend it. Um, I'm just going to end this by answering Total Eclipse. He says the midfield is unbalanced. I don't mm. think so because we have seen Gerard play DM. We've seen him play six. We've seen him play an eight. We've seen him play a 10. The same thing with Vera. We've seen him play a six. We've seen him play an eight. So I don't think it's unbalanced. And as I said, I wanted to do a 4-4-2 four, four, because that's what we used to do back then. But because we're doing a 4-3-3, three, three, the second striker just gets converted to a playmaker, if, which is where you know Fabregas what? played for us towards the end. If, 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 we, if we make this easy, Hassan, are, you, are you up for changing it? Are you are you is up it, for changing it to four four two or do you want to keep it? Very your nostalgia is gonna ruin everything, sad. Because these are the players that you grew up on Arsenal being successful. No, First of all, no, 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 if you want to put Bergkamp in there, can I speak? Thank you very much. If I put Bergkamp in there, and you want to play him in the ten, no problem. But there's there, there's two Liverpool midfielders that have to be in this team, not one. Uh, Vieira, uh, incredible, amazing. I put Gerard over Vieira personally. The third guy that needs to be in this team, and we cannot let uh, his hatred of Pogba cloud our judgment of him as a football player. You get me? And that's Graham Tunes. Because this man right here, it is he's just unreal as, as a midfielder. We're talking about this man is a DM who won the European Cup golden boot. We're talking he won he, you know the trophies that Cristiano and Messi won? He won this as a DM. He won this as a DM. Four-time team of the season. Team of the century, and listen to this. Listen to who he is as a man. Football League, 100 legends. 100 Liverpool players who shook the cup. Rangers Hall of Fame. Scottish Football Hall of Fame. English Football Hall of Fame. Scotland National Football Team Roll of Honor. We're talking about a player where we just have to transcend errors, and we have to look at who he is as a player and as a man. This guy is an incredible footballer, and he done it abroad from Liverpool as well. We're talking about a player who played in multiple different... We're talking about a player who played for Sampdoria, 
And let's be honest, back in them days, if you go play in Italy, you're not no scrub because that was the best league in the world for a long ass time. So that guy played in Italy in, in, in a football club that got to the final. This guy was the captain of the most successful team in English football history. So if we're talking about playing a role and playing a part, this guy was, was the captain. He led the players that have argued into this team. Graham Sunes has to be in this team. Now, if you want to put Bergkamp as the 10, no problem. We can put Bergkamp as the 10. If you want to go no 10, and you would rather say Vieira instead of Bergkamp, you guys choose the artist and the legend. But there's two players here who have to be here. And that's Sunes and Gerard for me. Captain, and you know, earlier on you were talking about Mr. Arsenal. I'm talking about a player who kept Liverpool Football Club afloat. We're talking about a player that is not an Arsenal icon or a Liverpool icon, a global icon. There is a hotel called Steven Gerrard Hotel. This is not something I can just move past like it's nothing. <laughs> Gerrard and bro, okay. you know what it is? That's a, a hotel in East Asia. Not in Bootle in Liverpool. In East Asia, there's a hotel called the Steven oh, Gerrard right. Hotel. We're talking about a global icon. We're talking about the, the reason why Liverpool Football Club have global supporters to begin with. Now, for me, Gerrard and Bergkamp, if we agree on them, we can put them in this team. So the argument is essentially Sunes versus Patrick Vieira. And Graham Sunes, for me, I'm sorry, captain of the team that dominated both England and Europe, the guy that won a golden boot as a DM, has to be in this team. He has to be in this team, factually speaking. I, I, I don't agree. I think, I th for me, Vieira and Gerard have to be there. I think Burkham definitely gets in. I mean, if we want to talk about honors of, of Burkham, first of all, Burkham was not an Arsenal icon. He was a Premier League icon. Some people have him as the greatest Premier League player of all time. I don't agree with that, but a lot of people have him as that. If we want to talk about his individual honors, forget his team awards, he was the Dutch Football Talent of the Year in 1990, Dutch Footballer of the Year in 91, uh, Eredivisie top scorer in 91, 92, 93. But anyways, that's before Arsenal. Obviously, European Championship team of the team of the tournament. Ballon d'Or, runner-up in 93. Twice. Runner-up, he didn't win it. Ballon d'Or, runner-up in 93 uh, and third place in 92. FIFA World Player of the Year because back then it was separate. Uh, only arguing Award, yeah, yeah, I'm putting Burkamp because you can have Burkamp in there. I have no problem with Burkamp. No, no, but Vieira is in there 100%. Vieira and Gerard are in. No, no, no. Hold on. You yourself, Sam, saying. Imagine the judge. The judge saying Vieira in there 100%. The judge, this guy is the judge. He's saying Vieira is in there 100 So what's the Sam, we cannot talk, we cannot take V Sam. We cannot take the, the most complete midfielder. We just and you agreed with me to say that he's out of the thing now. I thought you're trying to make an argument for Gerard Sonis and Vieira and exclude Burkamp. I, I think that's insane. Why would you put Sonis when you already have Gerard and Vieira in there? I think that makes no sense. And Burkamp as a 10 is better than Gerard. He's better than Vieira. He's obviously better than Sonis. So if you play by your lineup of having Sonis and Gerard, that means whoever you have as a 10 is going to be a downgrade on Burkamp, 100%. Vieira is the most complete midfielder we have seen in the Premier League. It's insane to not put him in. And outside the fact that he was so good, if you want to talk about leadership... Vieira sorry? Is the, complete midfielder, the most complete midfielder of course he in was. the team already. His name is Steven Gerrard. That's the most complete midfielder. That guy... Play, could play right back, left back, center back, DM, 10, right mid, left mid, striker, second striker. He played in every single position there is to play on the There's football. There's a difference, Hossam. He played in those positions. Yes, he's versatile, and I gave him the flowers for that. Vieira didn't need team. to play... Hossam, Vieira didn't need to play those positions for us because we had players who could do that job really well. The reason Steven Gerrard played a lot of these positions, and the reason why when he played for England when they tried to shoehorn Scholes and Lampard, they played them on the left, is because there was no one else to play those positions. So they're like, okay, you know what? We are struggling in the left side. Steven Gerrard, go there. We're struggling as a 10. Steven Gerrard, go there. We're struggling as a second striker. Steven Gerrard, go there. Vieira didn't need to play those positions because we had incredible players who were holding their own fort there. Yeah, but Gerrard is more complete than Vieira. Vieira because he had more to his game. Gerrard going forward is better than Vieira. That's the reality. Gerrard going forward could do a lot more than what Vieira could do. I think we say that because... Yeah, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. His, his technical ability on the ball and the way that he progressed with the ball and the stuff that he could do, he's just... There's a reason why, let's let's say it as it is, Steven Gerrard is regarded by many as the greatest Premier League midfielder with zero Premier Leagues for a reason. 
because we're talking about the players for you to be considered in that debate to begin with where you need to have unreal ability so we're, we, by definition he's complete if i'm arguing against Scholes, he's he he's more complete than Scholes. if i'm arguing against lampard he's more complete than lampard he's the most complete we've seen and in terms I, of this I, team I, if you the thing yeah. is that you know why you're, you're the fraudulence the fraudulence is you putting Bergkamp as a midfielder anyway this is this is where the I'm fraudulence. putting him as an attacking midfielder how's that fraudulent how's that fraud okay by that logic let's shift to a 442 so let's pick only a pivot Gerard Vieira and then second striker is Burkamp. it's the same no, thing for Sam we all Gerard know that Vera. that's changed the midfield three the midfield three you get me because Burkamp is not a midfielder should be Gerard, Vieira, and Sunes. That's the midfield. Okay, I have I have a better one for you then. The midfield three, if you want to put Sunes in there, because if you play that your formation, your lineup of Sunes, Gerard, and Vieira, the attacking mid has to be Gerard, logically, right? Because that's the only guy who played 10 there. I would say remove Gerard and put Burkham because Burkham as no, a 10 not, was better I'm than, attacking than Gerard. Mid, I'm going two eights. I'm going one DM and two eights. Uh, look, we have to decide on the thing because I wanted to do 4-4-2 and the only reason I'm doing 4-3-3 is because I'm thinking we're doing a 6, 8 and 10. If you're doing that, Burkamp and Vera definitely get in, bro. 100%. Okay. Look, Burkamp no disrespect to Gerard Sunes. Because then you got... The thing is, you guys never watch Sunes and you don't know who, who Sunes is. That's why we're just <laughs> bypassing him. Gerard, Gerard has to get in this team and if you want to put Burkamp in the no problem. The, the, the second midfielder is the captain of the most dominant side in English football history. I'm talking about the guy who's made five different Hall of Fames. I'm talking about the guy who won the golden boot of the, of a Champions League win, like with the winners of the whole competition playing as a DM. I'm talking about, you know who the last team to beat Real, Real Madrid in a Champions League final is? Liverpool Football Club. Graham Sunes. You get me. Graham Sunes has destroyed midfielders up and down the country and in Europe. This is the thing Hassan. for me, like, by the way, when we're talking about success, we're, to we're also talking about what they've done on the European stage for said club. This why for me. Okay, I'm, exactly. I'm, I agree. I'm, I'm but, as but, soon as it's in this team, as, as, as the DM, and I'm going Gerard and Vieira as the eight. If you want to go Bergkamp, no problem. Then Vieira comes out because Gerard's nah, more complete. No, Vieira doesn't Vieira. come out. So Vieira, can we I mean, change again, this can... four two? Can we change this to 442 then? Yeah, yeah four, I, four, I don't four, mind four, that. Yeah, My Let's players go. get in regardless of either formation. Gerard Vieira and then Burkamp as a second striker. Gerard Sunes, not Gerard Vieira. And I just want I just want to read out Vieira's thing before we just conclude and Saad, you make a decision. The guy was in PFA team of the year in 99, 2000, 2001 and 2002 and 2003. That's five consecutive seasons. Obviously the Premier League. Oh, and 2008. We won the invincible seasons, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I already said Gerard gets in. I already said Gerard gets in. He was Premier League player of the season. Premier League player of the season in 2001, right? UFA, UEFA team of the year in 2001. French football, French player of the year in 2001. This is I'm talking about a, a team that a year a French team that had Henri and had Zidane and had Anelka and all these guys. Premier League Hall of Fame. Obviously, he's already inducted. Bro, it's it's saying to like this, like we we agree that Vera is, is such a complete player, and you said that Gerard is more complete. I don't think Gerard was better in like the defensive work and the and the physical stuff than Vera, and that's natural because Vera was just that's physically physical, more imposing. Physical. Don't be disingenuous. See now where we're but that's part of football. But that's attributes. part of football. Physical, physical attributes, attributes are part of football. So, so, so your logic Sam, for that why comes you in the game. Than Gerard is is physical attributes. No, because I said he does ball. everything, but he. On, on the ball, he's amazing too. Vieira was technically gifted too. Yes, I'm he wasn't a bird. Yeah, was. Let's not lie. Let's not lie. Let's I'm not, not saying Vieira is not technically gifted. Okay. I'm saying Gerard is more co is complete. Gerard is the guy that if I want a DM, I'm choosing him. If I want an eight, I'm choosing him. If I want a ten, I'm choosing him. I'm talking about a player who could play in every single position across the football pitch, who had incredible versatility, who could defend, attack, do the stuff that is a midfield is required. Look at this guy's career. This guy has played next to the passer. But Sam, you Javier. don't pick him as a he's DM ahead the, of other DMs. That's he could do the DM role, but he wasn't the best at it. Let's not let's not lie. No, no, I'm not he was, he was the best at it. I'm saying oh, he could okay. play in okay, every fair. single position on the pitch. Bro, when a, when a midfielder could play right back, left back, center back, striker, second striker, right mid, left mid, RCM, LCM, DM, CAM, that's by definition the most complete we've seen. There's a reason why you're talking about five team of the season appearances. I'm talking about Gerard having eight record holder for... In for, that for case, Hussam, uh, I'm going to let uh, Saad, I think, just make a decision. But in that yeah. case, keep that same logic when I come to Bukayo Saka, who's played right wing, left wing, left back, uh, attacking mid. Keep that same logic about versatility then. No problem. Allah, 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 Allah. 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 Allah played left wing back for Al-Muqawin al-Arab.
See, you don't know that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't know we that. Said, I know. No, 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 Sam, Sam, Sam. No, no, no. You've already done yourself. We said we're only looking at their Liverpool and Arsenal careers. It's the reason looking, I asked this because down. I could have there put Fabregas are. in. Anyways, go ahead, go ahead, Saad. Sorry. Go yeah, ahead, but Saad. being complete is a lot more important in midfield than it is anywhere else. That's the reality. Listen, oh, uh, uh, so so I, I assume we're not going to go to the 4-4-2. Uh, right? I assume. Yalla, guys. I'm going to spoil so, Saad's judgment. It's going to be Gerard Vieira and Burkham because Vieira has to be in there. I dare you say Sunes right now. I dare you say Graham Sunes gets so in this I th- I think I think for me, uh, from what I've seen and the arguments that have been made, firstly, I'll say this right now. I'll say this right now, yeah? Sunis gets into this team straight away. Straight away, yeah? Vieira gets into this team straight away. It's done. Those there are two players that are those th- those are two players that can that are there, bro. It's staples. There, you think of English football. You take off and... Gerard. I'm leaving stream. I'm get clicking leave studio right now. If you take off Gerard, wallahi, this whole thing is a shambles. If we take off Gerard, this whole thing is is pointless. If we, we cannot take out Steve, okay, so, 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 so you so, have so, so you so, have so, two so, players. You have Gerard or Sunes. You pick one. Can I ask you a question? No, no, sad, sad, sad. I got this. I got it's this. For some, we have to agree on a formation. So we said, for some, one second, one second, for some. I, I, I got this. Sad, sad. One second, for some. This is why I asked you earlier. You cannot tell me I'm playing two eights. We agreed on a formation. I, by the way, I wanted four four two. I went. Sad told me four three three. No, but you have to play with a ten. You have to play with a ten. Why are we playing with two eights? No, no. The reason you're doing two eights is because you know Gerard doesn't get ahead of Burkham. Now you're being this. Four three. No, it is with a ten. That's four three three. That's in this current Liverpool team, not back then. Stop it. Stop it. No, we're not. No, no, no. Even back then, from Javi in yesterday's, bro. Okay, let's do four four two. Stop saying. Can we? Can we? Can we? Can we? Firstly, guys, can we stop saying that this footballer said this? Guys, Messi said that Romero is the best centre back. It's the best of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that Gerard is better than Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. That's who you want to leave out this. Zidane, wait, wait, wait. Zidane also said. Zidane. Sad. One sec. Zidane also said Scholes is the best midfielder he's ever seen. We all know that's bullshit. So what are we no, arguing that's here? A fake quote. My one's a real quote. I can give you the news. That's not a fake quote. Right Zidane now. did say it. I will share screen that's right now. The news oh, Sam. I'll that's not a fake quote. Right Zidane article. actually said that. Wait, let me say. Wait, oh nine. I'll share right now. Newspaper article. Man United fans are liars and disingenuous, and they make up. They made up quotes. They have made up so many quotes to defend their guy that no one respects anyway. When you're looking at, Sam, I'm reading Gerard, it right now. I'm reading it. He brother, said, "My toughest opponent, Scholes of right Manchester." Now, Zinedine Zidane okay. said, "Gerard is better than Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo." This is the level I'm talking about. You understand, Messi he, Ronaldo. He also, he also said, "Scholes is the best." I'm looking at three different articles, not like one. So I, I don't know. Zidane is confused. Yeah, well, Manchesterunited.com. You believe that shit? No, it's I'm not. Gonna, it's I like can talk get an article from the Guardian right now. Okay. That, that said okay, that. listen, listen, this, listen. This Hussam, here we go. Hussam, 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 okay, Hussam, Hussam needs to go. So we definitely need to get this uh, moved on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make the final decision. Yeah. So it's <laughs> eight times, eight times PFA so, team of the season record so, holder. So the midfield. Imagine. Are we? Are we? Are we going with four four two? Are we? Are we? Have we both agreed on four four two? We're leaving it four three three. It doesn't matter. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Four 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 two five. Have an Everton fan as the judge at this point. Go on. No, sir. no, no. Go you on. might as not well, bro. It might as not well. You might not as well. Brother, what, is 4, 3, 3. Fan, what is four three three? What is four three three? So, so DM so and two three three. No, no, Welcome, four, three, no, no. Three, for two, me, it's DM. two midfielders, Second. two midfielders, yeah. and a and a and a ten. It's always yeah, that's a four three three attack. That's four three three. Yeah, that's a four two three one. That's not a four three three. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, it's four three three attack. No, no it's or not. you have or you have three three. Or, or you have or you have. Uh, um, Anyways, pick pick side, pick side. Because so, I'm anyway, to go. What I'm gonna? Yeah, sorry. What I'm gonna pick? I'm not doing a poll, bro. Ninety uh, percent of the freaking audience right now is Liverpool, bro. Anytime yeah, there's a little player yeah. in there. We'll say it as what? it is. Hey, hold on a minute. No, that's a good hold thing. That's a, a minute. Good thing. Hey, that's a good thing. hold on. Hey, Vieira's above on the pose. Allah. <laughs> yeah, but Gerard. No, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, Hassad. You still need to make a vote without considering the Yeah, nah, this guy's not. Nah, we know he's going to go the Arsenal route. 
listen, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with. Um, I'm gonna <laughs> look at this. Look at look at look at Gerard winning now. Oh, <laughs> Ever lie, since it's on. Lie, it's How many this guy's listen, lie. what I'm gonna do. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take. We're gonna take Sunis out. We're gonna put Vieira in. We're gonna put Gerard in because he's made such a, a case. Such a case for Gerard. I think that's the only way to go. I can't. Sunis, I can I can make oh, an exception that like. Listen, Gerard. Gerard is. It has to be one or the other. I can't. I can't take Burkham out, bro. This guy was unbelievable, bro. Unbelievable. Like you genuinely don't understand. So if it's not Sunes, then it has to be Gerard. If it's not Gerard, it has to be Sunes. I'm gonna make the final decision. I am gonna go with Vieira, Sunes, and uh, Burkham. That's that's what I'm gonna go with. Wow, this is a shocking decision there. I don't expect. It. Make up your side. Okay. This is a judge. Um, this is a judge. Look, kissing the book of the guy he put in the team. Yeah, so so that's... what we're, what we're gonna do? No, no, but bro, you're gonna get players in, bro. You're gonna get players in the attack. Yes, yes, like, yes, yes. Oh, he's like, uh, I not was, coming uh, even in. That's it. Halas, done. I'm getting all three okay. in the attack. I hope you know this. So, no, no, you're not. No, you're not. But, yeah, but let, let really me say this. Let me say this. Bro. I'm actually going to pay respect to Liverpool here. I'm going to make this super quick. Obviously, yes. when I put in Bukayo Saka, I only I put it out of like hoping what he's actually going to end his career with. Um, and I am hoping he does continue in that trajectory. Obviously, I think Salah does get in. I, I rate... I know Hassam said he puts him second. I actually think Salah is the greatest winger to ever play in the Premier League because as incredible as Cristiano was and he won a Ballon d'Or, he didn't do it for as long as Salah. I'm keeping the same argument again about consistency and longevity salah has done it for so long he's banged like 20 plus goals in multiple seasons the cristiano has not done that um especially in his first couple of years yes i understand it was a bit different he was playing they were playing 4-4-2 he's playing on the right wing it's not the same i i get it and salah has more of a inverted striker to the point where they when they asked Thiago alcantara a couple of seasons ago he referenced mani and salah more as strikers not even like wingers but look he's he's obviously a legend of the premier league um i definitely think he needs to be on the right um on the left, I, love, I, love I am going to go with... Speaking there like he's doing me a favor by choosing Salah over Saka. No, 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 no. I'm giving you my... Everyone's choosing Salah over Saka. Sam, one second. Sam, one second. One second. One second. Yeah, Saka well, himself is Salah. Yeah, yeah, Habibi, it's yeah, 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 I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying... Here, I give you one. You know, you can have no, 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 no. You can have the greatest goal scoring Premier League winger. Sam, you're running out of time. I'm trying to help you. One second, Hassam. Hassam, I'm trying to help you by, by giving my three and then you give your three and let Saad vote, right? Because you said you're running out of time. So, Salah, obviously, I was giving props to Salah. I could have just said, Salah over Saka and let's move on. I wanted to praise Salah, but you know what? I want Bob Stahel, Bob Stahel, but okay. Anyways, left, obviously, like, I think uh, there's a, it's, it's obvious that it's going to be Kenny Douglas, but... Before you put Kenny Douglas, I just want to give props to Alexis Sanchez. He obviously doesn't have the trophies to back himself up, unfortunately, like Kenny Douglas does. Um, and I know Hassam is going to say he doesn't care about trophies, but the main argument to put Kenny Douglas and all these guys is going to be trophies, obviously, because if they won nothing, their stats would not have mattered. I want to say this about Alexis Sanchez really quick. I think he's super underrated. What he did for us was incredible. People, if you took at the best left wingers over the last 10 years you'll have people tell you Sadio Mane and 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 uh, and uh, Edin Hazard and obviously like these two were incredible the fact is I think Alexis Sanchez was at that level or even superior like 2014 2015 when Chelsea won the league and Hazard won That's why I didn't go the, the That's why I didn't go Mane yeah yeah fair 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 when when Hazard won the PFA play of the year and again Hazard is being spoken about especially by Chelsea fans as the Listen, best Manning. player in the Premier League over the last 10 years Alexis Sanchez in the two se in, in Hazard's best two seasons right 2014-2015 and 2016-2017 when he won the league um, and was one of the best players according to many people Alexis Sanchez beats him in both seasons in terms of GA the guy had 34 GA in the 2016-2017 season, in the Premier League alone, I'm not even talking about Champions League, in the Premier League alone, he had 24 goals and 10 assists. He's He obviously had a big impact on us winning the FA Cup in 2015, scored a banger uh, in the finals, um, also scored in the semi-finals and finals of the 2017 uh, FA Cup, and was the main reason why we won that as well. So people say like, oh, trophies matter. If, if people say like he didn't win thing, but he did win two FA Cups, and obviously that should not be uh, disrespected. The guy was, had incredible technique, incredible skills, amazing partnership with... Um, Mesut Ozil. And yes, it only lasted three and a half seasons, unfortunately. Um, and he obviously made a mistake. And he even acknowledged it later. He did make a mistake that when he moved to United. But I just want to make sure that I do give him props. Um, he had an incredible career. And if he stayed with us longer, he could have 
probably been in this list, but yeah, of course, I think it'll go to Kenny Douglas. No, fair enough, fair enough. I don't know what allegations are on Hassan right now. I don't know why he's being uh, being painted with this brush. Um, obviously, we'll let him answer. No way, back. really? Why? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's what. So uh, whether Vel is chatting shit. Not all the comments that are calling you a fraudulent judge and a corrupt judge. And a horrible judge and a shit judge. I don't know. A, I don't know. I don't you know? know why. I don't know why you're being painted with this brush. But obviously, if you want to address it, you can. But we'll, we're just gonna go. We're gonna go. Sad. Into the, the last thing. The, the, the last thing. So that Hassan uh, can give his entire front three is obviously the the striker. Um, it has to be the the greatest Premier League player of all time, Henri. I think one of the best strikers we've ever seen. In football, generally, definitely top 10. Maybe you can make arguments for top five as well. Um, people are talking about Luis Suarez ahead of Andre. It's, it's an absolute joke. If you're only discussing Premier League, it's an absolute joke, obviously. Uh, the guy was a complete striker, like had pace, skills, uh, incredible like technique. Uh, obviously, his goal scoring numbers were, were phenomenal. And had he stayed with Arsenal longer, he would have probably been the highest, the top scorer of the Premier League. Um, I think he has the best, I could be wrong, but I think he has the best goal to game ratio in Premier League history um, so it's not like a disrespect for him to be fifth in that list because others have played a lot more games than him um, and obviously phenomenal strike and the one thing about Henri which I think a lot of people do know but I just want to highlight it even more he's got mad goal scoring numbers obviously and scored against all the big teams obviously like that incredible goal against Madrid and a lot of things that he's done for us but people need to also give put respect on his assist and his playmaking he was an incredible playmaker he could create chances for others he had incredible passing technique I think he scored the second or third most free kicks in the Premier League as well so he was obviously an elite free kick taker he still holds the record to this date along with KDB for the most assists in a single Premier League season he was also top scorer of four different seasons and I think he did like three of them back to back to back so um, not enough words to be spoken about him people keep trying to compare strikers with him but I don't think that we'll ever see a striker as good as Henri so has to be Henri up front yeah Sam floor is yours <laughs> Nineteen time league winners six time Champions League winners the only English club to dominate England and Europe only have six players <sighs> in a combined 11 with Arsenal Football Club who have won three league titles and zero Champions Leagues over the last 50 years. This is a farce. It doesn't matter. The judge, the judge is fraudulent and corrupt and he's been bribed. Typical Arab, you get me? And he deserves to be put in prison. <laughs> I, I vote to put Saad in prison. That's what I vote. Because this, this is corruption at its finest. You get me? But listen, there is no point because, you know, in the words of Saad, Henri definitely gets in. So why should I argue Rush over Henri? Obviously, Salah, easy option. Kenny Daglish, easy option. Ian Rush, better than Henri anyway. Uh, Kenny Daglish is better than Henri as well, you know, so. Why? Why? Explain yeah. why Ian Rush is better than Henri. And don't I mean, make I the trophy. Because, it. because Egal is sending me death threats. So I have to, I'm oh, 41 fair, minutes fair, late. Yeah, well, I, well, I, fair, sorry, fair, fair. I, Gao, I do apologize because I know he's watching. I, I just want to say, you know, in it, in it, when Liverpool Football Club, the only club who have dominated literally Europe, we were Real Madrid before Real Madrid, you get me? And this is what happens to when, you know, when, when you let the corrupt judge, you know, I'm not even mad at Ashraf, I'm mad at the corruption. That's what I'm mad at. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, listen, uh, listen, listen. Um, uh, I think it's pretty simple. It's been put out there, man. I think yeah. the front three, yeah. the front three is gonna be Muhammad Salah. I'm still laughing at the comment saying, "Why are you trying? Why are you trying to make it act act like you're doing something for me by putting Salah in?" No, he, he no, he, it's funny because <laughs> he's like, you know, big up, like you know, you know what? Here you're gonna get attacker. No, well, say well, say you don't well, deserve. Like, this so I was. Like, I I was. Yeah, I wanted wallahi, to give flowers. Wallahi, wallahi, if we brought Saka himself to the stream, he would have told you Salah. Hussam, Hussam, I could have just said Salah was. and moved on. I wanted to give flowers to Salah to pay respect because people disrespect his name when they compare him to Edin Hazard and all that stuff. I wanted to give respect, but I hear that. I hear that. I, I just want to say publicly, you get me, guys. If this was my team personally, I'm only putting one Arsenal player, and that's Ashley Cole, and even he's known for his time at Chelsea. You get me? The rest would have been all Liverpool. But yeah, there's a reason why Liverpool no, dominated. Based, you get based on trophies, which Hossam says should not be taken into account Real for Madrid. players. So we were Real Madrid before funny. Real Madrid. 
But anyway, big up to Arsenal to get me. Big anyway, club. um, yeah, listen, uh, I was I was trying I was trying to put the the eleven. Manager, who is manager? Say, I, I dare you say Arsene Wenger over Bob. So who is your manager? Who is your manager? Yeah, who's your manager? Oh. Okay. Okay. okay, fair enough. Now, fair enough. Hello. We're not going to disrespect you badly. No, no. Hello. We don't. We're not. Hold on. Relax. Relax. Yeah. Because relax. Because Lee Dixon got over your your value. Uh, famous. Yeah, yeah. Home. You see how I knew he was anyway, going to be fraudulent. Anyway. Um, well. So 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 trend. so I just sit on I sit on the floor. Trend. Sit on the floor. Yeah. Sit on the floor Seven real quick. Four, just sit on the floor. We I I will respect. Well, Paisley, I'm not going to disrespect him, yeah? yeah I'm not yeah, going to disrespect 100%. him because he actually, he's actually like a, a generational, bro. like he's he's an icon, bro. You know what I mean? He's, he's an icon in Liverpool history, bro. Yeah, so I'm not going to disrespect him, of course. Big up to um, Wenger as well. I won't but anyway, him. He changed the diets yeah. and the culture. And I, I want to say, principles. yeah. He, he done, I, I actually... I actually so, respect Wenger. I'm one of the ones who doesn't disrespect him because I always take into account the context. This guy, I don't think many managers in the world at the time would have survived a new stadium, you know, for 15 mm. years without this, without revenue and spending and having to sell his best player. So I respect. Mm. And then you have people like Minerals FC. Yeah, this is Liverpool Arsenal all-time fucking 11. Fer Fergie mm. should be the gaffer. Fergie should be... Where did that Fergie represent Liverpool or Arsenal? Did he represent <laughs> both clubs? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes people listen from their testicles. Yeah, we're talking Arsenal, Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, what does Ferguson have to do with it? With this uh, whole conversation, Ferguson has nothing to do with it. Uh, uh, and I just want to say, I just want to say. I just want to say, like, even though I said, like, we don't compare, if we shouldn't take trophies as the main thing when we're comparing players, but that should be the main criteria when comparing managers, mm -hmm. 100%. So if you're comparing yeah. any two managers, you look at style of football, you look at uh, the style of play, the, the, the transition, where he took the team from, but trophies are the ultimate thing, obviously. So, and Bob Paisley wins on that. Uh, Bob Paisley, he, he, um, if my history is correct, he picked up from uh, Bill oh, Shankly. He yes. picked up from Bill Shankly and, and, and then took it to a level, bro. <laughs> to a level, bro. So yeah. listen, big up to Bob Paisley, bro. Listen, I know I know history, okay? Right, can we make a quick change? Can we put Trent but, ahead of Lee Dixon just so we can have seven players? Yeah, yeah, please. 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 Yeah, six well, times uh, seven seven listen, listen, listen. It's okay. Yeah, it's the okay. The club in England has six players only in this 11. But Sam, well, Trent, will be, Trent will probably be there. Right. You know, it's funny that you're saying put Trent in front of Lee Dixon. I thought you would say, yeah. Couple of years he'll get there for years, sure, bro. In a couple of years, well, like he's there, bro. Well, like he's there, bro. We'll do yeah. this in two more two years, and I and I he'll be there. I promise he'll, he'll be there. Unle he's unless, unle unless, unless, anyway. exactly. I'm gonna say that. Well, 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 Listen, um, big up to everybody who has tuned in. Listen, this was uh, I've been getting W stream uh, like all stream, bro. So, if, obviously, you people love this, bro. You love this kind of stream. So, there will be another one coming in and, and we'll be trying to do this more and more. Um, but for the super chats you got sent in, Hellboy saying big up, sad Ashraf and Hussam. Uh, big up to big you, up, Hellboy. Hellboy. Always love, man. Always love. And Ozan. Yes, Ozan coming in saying, I believe even Lee Dixon uh, would pick Trent in this XI. Bro, we're not asking about what Lee Dixon would do. We're not asking about what any footballer would do. This is based on the arguments, bro. And I just think the argument for Lee Dixon was 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 better than the one for Trent. That's just that's just my opinion. Now, I'm the judge. It is where it is. Anyway, um, I'm certified as well. Certified judge uh, checked. They checked my bias and there was no bias there. You know what I mean? But listen, guys, make sure you're smashing the like button. Um, make sure you're subscribing to the channel. Stay right here, yeah? Stay right here because we are going to pass you over to... to um, uh, you're going to go over to Igal. Igal's stream where Igal is going to be doing title race talks. So make sure to stick on to that. And guys, just go in there and just smash a like for him and just just spam him with... Uh, spam him with uh, uh, Lee Dixon. Just spam him with Lee Dixon. How about that? Or Trent. Spam me with Trent, okay? Hold that, girl. Spam him with Trent. Just put Trent. Keep on spamming it. Guys, I love you all. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out, my people.